All right, we are back with another episode of Speed Runs from the Crypt, a bi-weekly horror topic that we do over here at GEQ. Uh, as well, before we begin, I just want to read and say that Summer Games Done Quick is coming up from June 26th to July 3rd. Prize submissions are now open. If you want to submit to that, go to gamesdonequick.com for more info. I hope you're all doing good today. I hope you're all doing well. I guess tonight as well, because it's nighttime here. But we're going to be going into tonight's show, which the theme for today is simply Father's Day. Uh, I always like to kind of plan around the holidays, even if we're not exactly in the ballpark. I think it's next Sunday uh, or the Sunday after that. I don't remember which one, but I know it's soon. So I thought it'd be fun because surprisingly enough, there's a lot of horror dads out there and a lot of favorite horror dads. So we're going to focus on a couple of the really fun ones that I like. And I think it should be fun to take a look at that. Um, but yes. I hope you're all doing well today. Anyway, going into the best dad in all of horror, we're going to be going into one of my favorite games, an absolute classic, and really, I think, probably one of the best horror games ever made. Uh, we're going to be going into Silent Hill, ran by Mr. McSqueezy. Feel free to take it away. Hello there. Yeah, uh, I'm Mr. McSqueezy. Uh, feel free to call me Mac. That's sometimes easier. Uh, with me on comms, I've got Saf, or Safra. Uh, do you want to say Hello, hi? how are you doing? Yeah, yeah, good to be here. I'm Safarel, and uh, yeah, you can call me Saf, whatever you like, and uh, yeah, and let's go. <laughs> yeah, as as like Dysa says, yeah, we're doing a Silent Hill one. Uh, we're doing the all bosses category, which is a fairly new category in the scheme of things for Silent Hill one speedrunning. Um, it basically it kind of follows the any percent route, but we essentially uh, we we kill two extra bosses. It's nice. You can see a bit more of the game, uh, and it's pal friendly too. Um, but we're going to get started very shortly. Uh, we play on easy mode. Uh, so we'll go uh, three, two, one, and time to start. So uh, we'll kick off straight away. There's a little cool bit of tech that saves us a little bit of time uh, to start us off. Uh, this is called the ply walk, I believe. And uh, quite simply, we just let Harry, the uh, best dad in the world, uh, do about five walking steps forward. And that saves, I think... Half a second or something? Uh, half a second, I think, yeah. yeah. Half a second. But it may not seem, uh, you know, big in the in the scheme sure. of things. Uh, but this is a game that is timed by IGT uh, rather than RTA. So at the end of the game, we get a nice little result screen that shows us just how fast we were. Um, so this is a game that's fairly optimized, I would say. Um, sort of minor movement mistakes can cost you quite big time uh so while it may seem in insignificant it's it's well worth doing uh, just just because um but <laughs> it's probably my favorite bit of the game is uh harry's uh eight-year-old daughter shell just turned eight last week by the way have any of you seen her um she's somehow faster than harry if we could play as cheryl in this game i think that would be a lot easier for speed runs <laughs> 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 And this is this is a uh, lovingly called Nightmare Alley. Um, basically, we're gonna just go to the end of this alleyway. Uh, Cheryl has just somehow zipped right ahead. We we can no longer see her. Let's hope we get some good RNG here. Let's get grabbed. That's, that's it. Yeah. So at the end of this, uh, Harry's gonna say a few funny words. He's gonna talk quite fast as well, which I'll explain in uh, a few moments. Um, but yeah, we're going to try and strafe into a grab. We want to have a quick death here. Uh, yeah, this is so a big reset point. This is, yeah. Oh, nice. Good nice. grab. And a quick Not death bad. as well. Very Not nice. Bad. <laughs> uh, so that, that's sort of the ideal outcome there. Um, I've been practicing this the last sort of couple of days. Uh, I've been finding that Harry will kind of zoom right past the, uh, the grey children there, as they're called. Uh, or they'll just ignore him completely. So I'm very glad that, that worked well uh, on, on the run. Um, you'll see us using a fair bit of different movement capabilities here. So you'll see Harry has the ability to strafe. Uh, he'll also walk occasionally as well. Uh, but my favourite mechanic is Harry bonking. Um, it's... <laughs> Something where you'll, you'll think you're going to get through a door quite nicely, um, but Harry himself will say, no, you know what, let's just have a little feel for it. Let's have a little bonk. Yeah, um, when Harry reaches, like, max speed, he basically becomes bonkable. It's about six steps. 
And uh, yeah, if you run into the door straight or the wrong way, then you will bonk it. So that's always fun. Always, always. <laughs> um, some of you may have clocked on that Harry is talking quite fast. Um, what's, what we're doing is we're playing this on fast disk speed, which is a uh, feature on the PlayStation 2. It doesn't save us any time uh, in-game time-wise, but it does mean that some cutscenes are sped up uh, and certain music tracks are sped up as well. This is quite notable in the UFO ending, where the uh, UFO song will play at two times speed, or something to that effect. And when that ends, you get another track play in place of it, which I just find really funny. Um, it's it's quite a nice feature. Um, now Harry's current quest here is to find three keys. Uh, we've, we've left the cafe, and we need to find the keys to Eclipse. Uh, so they're scattered all about in sort of old Silent Hill, I think this place is called. Um, in quite convenient locations. Um, now Harry does know where the keys are, but he will need to find a bit of paper in a few moments to tell him where to go next. Which is a, a little message that's left from Cheryl. Um, Harry's really gunning for that Father of the Year award. He's, he's trying to make sure that he and Cheryl reconnect quite quickly. Um... No spoilers, but he, he kind of meets Cheryl again, kind of. Um, yeah, so even though we know where to go, uh, you do have to check the papers first. Or when he goes to the doghouse, Harry's not going to realize that there's anything in the doghouse. So we do have to check the papers. And uh... yeah, So there's a, there's a very fun bit coming up now. Uh, there's a mailbox, which is just kind of um, not hidden away but there's a nice little gap and a fallen tree which lets you go across to the mailbox. And I just always think to myself, how? How did that happen? Why could Harry, you know, what if he falls off the branch? What if there's a jumping mechanic in the game? There kind of is a jumping mechanic. Um, if you can jump backwards, uh, if you hold the run button and the back button down, you can jump backwards, which is kind of cool. It's not really useful for us in the speedrun though, unfortunately. Apart from maybe any percent, I'd say, if you're uh, doing the, the out of bounds, the romper out of bounds, and you need to reset the room, uh, the backwards jump is, is quite good in that respect. Um, but as I say, this is the all bosses category, so we don't actually do any of the out of bounds. Uh, so it makes really it really comfy. Yeah, it's a much, much comfier run. Um, I think I've reset this category a lot less than I have the, <laughs> the any percent category. Um, and we there's also. A it's a skip at the end of the game. Uh, it's called the Sybil Skip in the amusement park. Um, now that is a interesting one because you can't do it on the PAL versions. I've kind of gone a bit too early here as well. Um, but on the NTSC version, you can essentially skip the entire amusement park. Um, so all bosses is a category that is PAL friendly. So if you own a uh, European version of the game or uh, other PAL variant, then you can actually run the all bosses category and be somewhat competitive. And this is the doghouse meme that uh, everybody loves. Um, I had it in my head I was going to try and get the doghouse text up there, so I'm sorry about that. <laughs> but I'm trying to go fast. Um, and yeah, this is this is the sort of first section of the game, uh, first area done. We use those keys, obviously, so get through into the keys to eclipse door and as you'll see the area has now gone quite dark uh it, it's eclipsed if you will we're gonna make sure that we turn our light off here uh because there's creatures here um this creature is a um i keep calling it flapper um affectionately known as a flapper it's a flapper yeah um i can't actually remember the official name for it now um, uh air screamer Air Screamer, that's the one. Yeah. yeah. Um, so they are kind of attracted to light, I feel. I don't know if it's uh, sort of official, but I find that yeah, when I've got my lights are. on, yeah. they are, yeah. Yeah, they, they tend dogs, to chase a bit more. Funnily enough, dogs aren't, I don't think. I don't think oh. dogs are, are they? No. Dogs and scratchers aren't. It doesn't affect them. No. Um, but interestingly enough, grey children are, uh, to some extent. And we're going to use a little bit of tech here, uh, probably about sort of the next five minutes or so, so it's, it's, it's a bit later on. Um, but we can actually manipulate uh, enemy positions, which 
helps us quite a lot in trying to get through unscathed through the school. Um, I think I speak for most SH1 runners when I say the school is a uh, not a fun place to, to go through for your first time. Um, it's a daunting task. Yes, lots of enemies to dodge, uh, lots of items to pick up, lots of puzzles. Um, well, I say lots of puzzles, there's one key puzzle, uh, the piano puzzle, uh, which I guess for your first casual playthrough is always daunting. Um, but we're going to just pick up a few items. So we've got a chemical. We're going to go to the next room. We're going to use the chemical on this nice, I think, porcelain hand. So we're going to say goodbye to the hand and hello to the gold medallion. And we're now going to go down to the school's clock tower. Uh, Dead by Daylight enjoyers will maybe recognize this area as the Midwich Elementary School. Um, very cool of uh, Dead by Daylight to uh, give Silent Hill 1 the idea of the school courtyard. Um, so we're going to use an item here. We've got one more medallion to get. And this is where the, uh, the piano puzzle comes into play. Now, you know... Uh, you know, uh, there's actually one really neat fact about the Dead by Daylight map in Silent Hill. Oh, is there? Um, yeah, it's a really weird Easter egg, but it's actually a homage to the game. Because right now, um, you already did the the hand puzzle. Yes. And I know right now you're going to the piano puzzle. Um, in Dead by Daylight, if you fix the generators in the piano room and the chemistry lab, um, once you've done all the generators, the clock tower will actually open. Oh, and you'll get a special treasure chest, and it's usually like really rare item in there. I'll have to remember that next time I play. <laughs> yeah, there's also like a seal of Metatron in there too. Ah, oh, cool. Okay, I'm definitely doing that next time. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was the piano puzzle. Uh, we've done that pretty smoothly. Um, basically, if you're using very well, so far, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm very happy with this so far. Um, so this is actually our first bit of manipulation. We're gonna. Walk forward, light off, and then turn. And then you'll see that the grey children there, or grey child rather, uh, they attempted to grab, but they, they didn't quite manage it. Uh, so we're going to do that twice. That was the first time. We'll do it once more. Yeah, taking uh, that little walking step there allows, the, allows you more room, basically, so they can move a little more forward. And it's nine times out of ten, you'll, you'll get by no problem if you just hug the corner there. And it's a nice little strat if you don't want to get grabbed. Save health. Yeah, sometimes if you're unlucky, they'll just kind of be in the way, and that's just life. You'll have to kind of accept it and move on, really, in that case. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is our second ray through. Nice little uh, locker vortex there. There we go. Nice and smooth. So that's Brilliant. that's school one. Uh, gone through the uh, clock tower. No seal of Metatron here, unfortunately. Um, maybe next time. Um, but just going back to the piano puzzle, um, if we're using a uh, PS2 controller or a PS1 controller, or well, any controller, as long as it's got analog sticks, um, you use the D-pad for movement, but the analog sticks for cursor movement. So things like puzzles, uh, you'll notice the cursor moves a lot faster on an analog stick than it does with the D-pad. So it's a little bit of free time save there if you're not using it already. There are a few instances as well where if you hold analog going straight in certain rooms, it happens about four or five times that Harry won't walk towards the door. So it's very handy to know that in certain places. And actually um, one of those was the... Uh, oh, I've I've matched a bit too early there. <laughs> uh, that's the other thing with this game as well, is uh, you're kind of wanting to constantly mash X to get through doors. Um, but there are some doors that you'll examine. And uh, I was maybe a little bit... Uh, Preemptive there on my mashing. Uh, these things happen though. Um, so we're gonna say thank you to the school demon for giving me the shotgun in the in the toilet. The shotgun's actually the only weapon we really need to use from this point onwards. Uh, we did use the handgun earlier on for the uh, the air screamer or the the flapper, if you will, in the uh, the cafe. Um, and actually, with the all bosses room. While it is similar to any percent, we do need to pick up two extra boxes of shells. Uh, and thankfully, the school has three out of four of the boxes that we need to pick up. So the school's really efficient in that respect. There's there's lots of pickups that we rely on later on. Uh, there is an ampule with the shotgun shells we pick up as well. Uh, an ampule is a healing item. It gives us full health. And I think it regenerates health for a few moments afterwards yeah, as well. It does, yeah, for a little bit afterwards. It's very 
very effective healing item. But they're very rare, as you can imagine. I think there's about, what, three or four in the game? Something like that? Um, tree. Is it tree? Yeah. Yeah, I think I, yeah, there's two in school and one in hospital, if I remember correctly. Yeah. Uh, and this is a nice little uh, break, if you have a little drink or anything like that. Uh, you can't skip this cutscene. Um, basically, we've, we've just put a rubber ball in a hole. We're going to flood the other hole to release a key, which we're going to go and grab in just a few moments uh, from the school courtyard. Uh, you'll notice as I go down the stairs or up the stairs that I will take a small walking step in between. Um, just because controlling Harry is a bit like controlling an 18-wheeler with nine wheels. Um, he doesn't quite want to move in the way you want him to. He uh, <laughs> can be quite sticky at times as well. Um, so sometimes a, a walking step in between uh, just helps you uh, kind of maneuver Harry a bit if you need to. So this is our key. Uh, do a nice little strafe here, which hopefully I won't mess this up. There we go. Very nice. And you'll notice that I just turn my light off uh, in between there. Uh, just to make sure that I don't get grabbed by the grey child in that corner. Uh, so, a few more rooms left in school. Uh, yeah, that's true. It's pretty, pretty hard to pull off. Uh, it's very common that you see it in a lot of runs, but uh, GG's on that movement. Thank you. Yeah, you'll uh, sometimes. Yeah, you'll sometimes either overshoot the stairs or undershoot the stairs. Yeah. And a uh, nice little jump scare here. I'll let this play for a little bit. Uh, there's be a, a, a cat in here. Uh, unless, no. There's not a cat in here. Sorry, the jump scare. There it is. There you go. Uh, what you'll find... Cat. The cat is in the normal school, I think, isn't he? And he jumps out. <laughs> it is, he, uh, yeah. He reaches a cruel fate by uh, the hands of a mumbler. <laughs> or maybe I think of the pal version. I think something like that, yeah. There's... Yeah. Um, so the expectation being that if you've, you've seen the area in the normal school and you then go to Otherworld school, you kind of expect a cat to be in there, but uh, no, sadly, the cat has gone. He's gone to just cats, uh, which we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll walk past later on. <laughs> There's a few funny shop names in this game. Um, I think this is the game that has uh, Konami Burger, I feel. Um, or do they... Maybe switch that to Happy Burger for Silent Hill 3. I can't quite remember. Oh, here yeah, was a bit. Happy Burger sounds right. And that, that uh, grey child there was a little bit happy. So we've got our first sort of kind of major route change, if you will, from any percent to all buses. Uh, rather than going straight to the valve room, which is just to our side, we're going to go up here and we're going to pick up a few shotgun shells, if Harry can see them. And the ampule as well for safety, just in case. Yeah, that's the first instance where the, the two routes diverge a little bit. And then so. this is our valve puzzle. Uh, so the right valve, we always want to turn uh, on the first option twice. And then the valve on the left, we're going to uh, turn the second option once. And hopefully... Nice. That was very, very smooth. Um, I'm, I'm very impressed with that, actually. <laughs> What you'll often find is uh, if Harry sort of misplaced sort of diagonally once or or not quite far ahead, he'll kind of miss that second valve and you'll try and rearrange him, uh, which is quite frustrating to do on a run. Uh, first boss, split head, uh, three shots to the head with no mouth open. And then we're going to do another two shots with the mouth open and that's split head dead. Yeah, if he grabs you in his jaws on any difficulty, you're, you, it is, you are dead, basically. So you have to be careful of that. But it's it's a pretty basic fight. Three shots to open his mouth, two to finish him off. It's, it's first boss down. Let's go. And thankfully, on easy mode, his uh, his jaw movement is a lot slower. If you're playing it on hard mode, it's a lot faster. Um, I think for knife only, they do it on easy mode, but it's still particularly uh, rough of a fight because, again, it's sort of one dropped input or um, sort of one mistake can, can cost you the run there, really. It is pretty scary. I know a, a good joke amongst uh, Silent Hill runners is the second boss is not too far after the first boss. 
Um, the second boss isn't traditionally an enemy, it's actually a room. Uh, we call it the bridge control room. Uh, oh, God. Which allows us to move on to the next part of the run uh, and leading to the hospital. Uh, but first, we're going to go to the church. We're going to see uh, our boy JC. He's going to bless the run for us. And also <laughs> the upcoming uh, bridge control room shenanigans. Um, I often find this this corner here, actually. Uh, that dog, if I'm kind of not thinking or just kind of out of out of my head for a little bit, that dog will ob often bite me or I'll overshoot this little alleyway. I've run past that numerous times. It's so easily done. <laughs> There's a, another enemy here, another air screamer, which we kind of want to be cautious of. He's in a good position there, actually, and hopefully he's not going to chase us. Um, yeah, very nice. And there's a bit of manipulation you can do here as well down this alleyway, actually. Um, there's two screamers that are planted either side. If you go too far over to the right in this alleyway, uh, one of the screamers will start taking off and chase you. Uh, if you're too far over again, the second screamer, this one that's now following me, uh, will also kind of follow you all the way out. Um, I think it's a very specific line you've got to take. So the line we took there was good. We didn't get chased out of the, the room or the, the alleyway. Um, if we do get chased, what you'll find is we have to kind of bob and weave a bit to not get hit. Luckily, the second guy never really catches up with you anyway, so it's kind of, it's comfy. Exactly, yeah. Sounds like uh, movement is tight. There we are. He's blessed the run. Uh, the BCR should now be smooth. Um, if my practice was anything to go by earlier anyway. Um, so we just picked up a key item there, the, the Flaros, uh, which in the lore, uh, what that does, uh, I think it's just it kind a piece of, of junk. Just a piece of junk, yeah. Uh, we don't need to worry about it too much. We don't actually use it in the run. Um, but Harry himself, he will uh, use it in a cutscene uh, on a lesser, I think it is, or a projection of a lesser. And then... Things kind of got a bit funky there, but we'll, we're, we're quite a way off that yet. Uh, but we have got, got the second boss now coming up, uh, the good old bridge control room. Uh, and you'll kind of see why, given how Harry moves like an 18-wheeler sometimes, that it can be an awkward room to navigate. There's lots of tight turns. So we've got tight turn number one here, and then tight turn number two here, and then a few more coming up. Now, that was actually pretty smooth. That was very well done. <laughs> You'll sometimes overshoot or undershoot, and um, sometimes Harry will kind of run in front of that railing that's just behind him. Uh, sometimes you'll go to use the menu and the key is not possible to be used. It's very, very strange. Um, also, Harry can fall down the stairs, which is very common on uh, EPSXC emulator. Yes, and, uh, that's yes. A, that's a meme in itself. Sometimes it just, the game decides to do that to you. <laughs> I think I've actually had it happen to me on uh, PS3 at one point as well. Yeah, it um, can happen on console as well, but uh, it's, it's quite rare. It's mostly an EPSX y thing, I think. Yeah, I, th I think Duck Station's had a few uh, reports of it as well. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, we've, we've, uh, there's actually a few different <laughs> variances between the versions. Uh, so on the PS3 version, using certain weapons in certain areas will... Uh, emit a very strange and high-pitched beep, which, uh, if you're playing it casually, you might think is normal. <laughs> but it adds to the atmosphere. It, it does, yeah. Yeah, it's Akira at his finest uh, with his sound design. Um, <laughs> <laughs> as far as I think it is just a bug. Um, uh, and there's another another route change, actually, coming up. Um, so, as I say, because we're, we're doing all bosses, uh, Sybil herself does count as a boss. Uh, what we'd normally do in any percent is we go into the next two rooms, sort of adjacent to uh, this director's room, and pick up a bottle and some red liquid. Uh, we don't actually need to do that anymore uh, for all bosses. We just skip that entirely. Um, because unfortunately, uh, if there are any Sybil enjoyers out there, uh, we do have to take care of her, unfortunately. Um, but it's all for good reason. It's for it's for speed and it's for all bosses. This next bit here, you'll sort of see my cursor movement here. Uh, so yeah. This is where the nobody your likes the elevators. No, no. Uh, but this is where the D-pad comes in handy. It just makes the elevators that little bit speedier. Uh, and again, 
trying to navigate Harry to do these tight turns and get the elevators at the same time, it can be a bit of a problem. That went relatively smooth, I'd say. It's very nice. Uh, and now we're in hospital. Uh, a very rusty hospital. I would not want to be going to this hospital if I was injured. Um, Harry, of course, does not have a choice. Uh, we're, we're making him go through here, but pretty fast. And we're going to pick up four items now. We're going to pick up four plates. Uh, there is a blue plate, a yellow plate, a green plate, and a red plate. Um, I don't think it's quite in that order. Uh, Our next puzzle. And we're now picking up a blood bag. Because, you know, most good hospitals have blood packs. And we're meeting our friends, the nurses. Now, these nurses, they are not quite like the Silent Hill 2 nurses. Um, they're a bit more uh, reserved, I would say. Um, but they can be quite grabby. So, for instance, this one here often can grab you on the way in or the way out. Uh, but thankfully, uh, played ball there. And there's another little bit of tech coming up here as well, actually. Um, movement tech. We're going to enter this room and we're going to do a little strafe. Turn right. And then hopefully, yeah, nice. Pick up that red plate right. quite smoothly. Uh, sometimes you might be encouraged to uh, just kind of run around the desk and pick that plate up. But um, if you strafe into it, it's a very, very comfy strat. Sometimes you overshoot it, but... Oftentimes you'll you'll get through there. Yeah, it looks harder than it is. It's actually a lot comfier than running around the table, I find. Yeah, and a lot of this is is is, is muscle memory. In fairness, um, uh, oh, nice little glitch here. Actually, um, I think it's a glitch anyway. Um, you meant to use the blood pack on the tentacles at the end of the room, but you can actually use it as you enter the room. So it's a little bit faster for those that are speed running. Um, there's also a little bit of camera trickery as well. Um, some rooms that I enter, I'll hold the camera button down to get a more favorable sort of sight on where I'm going. Because uh, some rooms you'll have the sort of camera uh, facing Harry's front and uh, it doesn't make it easy to sort of see where you're going. This is a nice little puzzle. The solution I think is in this room. It tells you where all the plates go. And we've got a cool bit of tech here as well. We've got a nurse skip. Hopefully. Oh, not quite. Not quite. Almost. Almost. Almost there. Um, that nurse can be pushed out of the way as she's dying. Uh, so what you'll do is you want to try and sort of shoot her quickly. Um, oh, I don't know how that worked, but that worked. <laughs> yeah, somehow she cooperates wonderfully and she just like, it's like he's on roller skates. She just push out of the way. Other times she just be planted to the spot. I don't know how it works exactly, but... You can save about three seconds if you get past her. It's it's very it's very nice, but when you don't get it, it can be not the nicest feeling. Yeah, um, it, it's somewhat consistent in terms of trying to get past her, um, but yeah. you get some days where it just doesn't happen. I am going to try and do something cool here uh, involving lights. Uh, so normally for this next cutscene coming up, Harry's flashlight will will stay on. Uh, but hopefully, yes, there we go. One, we um, got one. <laughs> you can turn the light off as you exit that menu, and uh, you get a cool dark cutscene as opposed to the uh, the normal light cutscene. If you get two of them, it's a perfect dark. Yes. <laughs> and uh, in the depths of the hospital now, Harry is gonna find a nice little hospital bed, and he's gonna find a little picture. Uh, the picture is off a lesser, although Harry thinks it looks quite a bit like Cheryl. Um, he's, he's not entirely wrong. And uh, this is sort of the end of the hospital. There is one more kind of major thing that happens in hospital. Uh, it's called, I, well, I think it's called the Doctor Skip. Um, there's, there's a doctor that kind of blocks the way for the exit to the hospital. Uh, and Maybe his position... Like doctor. He's, he's, he's not the nicest doctor. Um, they should take his medical license away. He does more harm than good, <laughs> I find. Um, I he's actually... Oh, he was in the way there a little bit. Um, he's more... 
He's more bouncer than than doctor, I say. I think he's a security guard on a weekend job as a doctor. <laughs> <laughs> so following this cutscene, we are going to just try and strafe into this desk to pick up this key. Um, now, I know many people casually that have uh, tried to progress past this point, but have forgotten to pick up the key or didn't realize there was a key to pick up on the desk. Um, yeah, we've all done it once. At least once. I think I've certainly done it in a speed run as well. Um, <laughs> Yeah, the game will let you go to the uh, all the way to the antique shop, and it will let you think that you've got the key. <laughs> go to the door. Nope, can't get in. <laughs> Back to the hospital. Always fun. Yeah, it's the uh, the longest uh, I think minute and a half backtrack you'll ever do uh, in a game, uh, and you won't make that mistake again. <laughs> <laughs> At least you hope you won't make that mistake again. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, the the antique shop. This is uh, probably the bane, I think, of, of most Silent Hill runners. Um, this is where the iconic, I think iconic is the right word to use here, uh, Romper Skip takes place. Um, but thankfully, romper. thankfully we, we do not do that here today. Uh, we, we get to just walk past him, say hello and move on. Uh, that's the skip where you'd sort of get hit in that transition as we go down the stairs. And uh, Harry starts to float, which is, is pretty cool. But we're going to stay grounded. Uh, Harry hasn't earned his wings today. He's got to find his daughter first, then he'll earn his wings. Yeah, there's a very, very cool uh, scene uh, with Harry entering this hole. Uh, we actually see Sybil there. Believe it or not, we uh, <laughs> he does exist. I've got to do my quick turn there. Um, it's kind of ironic, really. Maybe not ironic, but I find it strange that you've got uh, Sybil, who is a, a police officer, someone who has uh, training and a special set of skills, uh, lets a civilian go through a very dark hole first. Um, <laughs> I don't think that would quite fly in the real life, but... <laughs> no, definitely not. Thankfully, this is video games, and we don't necessarily need logic. Um, so there he is. There's the romper. Um, thankfully, just brushed past me. And we're going to go to the actual uh, second boss of the game now. We're doing this legit. Completely legit. No glitches. Um, so this next boss is called uh, Twin Feeler, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. He, um, he's basically the larva that becomes Float Stinger in a while. He's going to burrow off and yeah. So we don't see yeah. him mo We don't see him in the annual percent run, so this is kind of new. If you're, if you're yeah. used to watching the annual percent run, you don't see this part. Uh, do you want to uh, explain the strat here, stuff? Because you you kind of came up with this. Um, I didn't really come up with it, but uh, you basically take three steps backwards on the grate. You you want him to you try to avoid him burrowing into the ground, basically. Again, so you're gonna manipulate him so he's you're by the fence on the ground, a grate, and you take a couple of steps backwards. You face in a certain direction, just forward. And he should spawn behind you. You strafe away very quickly. And you turn around, shoot him up uh, close range. Five or six shots, mostly six shots, and you can get like a one cycle if you do it correctly. And it will avoid him going back into the ground. And yeah, if he's like going over the fence, then he won't go back into the ground, which is which is very nice. So, uh, quick yeah. question, actually, in regards to that fight, because I know like, way, way back in the old days for the Out of Bounds even thing, for any percent, I believe runners would actually get the hunting rifle there, wouldn't they? Uh, they would. Yes, correct, correct. Is it the not rifle useful for use in these um, runs. all bosses? It can be used as a safety, but we normally have enough shells uh, to get through the game. All right. You'd have to waste, you'd have to waste quite a few of them uh, to to need the rifle by the end of the game. So, yeah, yeah especially if, if you get a, if you get a one cycle twin feeder, you should be fine. You yeah. won't need the rifle. And if you did want to pick it up as a That's safety, just cats. <laughs> just cats. And it doesn't actually cost you time if you did want to pick it up as a safety, but it would cost you time just equipping it at the end of the game before uh, the last boss. Yeah, so it's a cool little backup. Um, yeah, but shotgun is fine. Yeah, I think we get about is it forty eight um, shells we get? I think because you get you get twelve shells yeah. per box on easy. It's forty eight. Um, also, yeah. GG's on a fight. Oh, thank you. That was a that was a much very very clean fight actually. Yeah. Yeah. 
And we've got a, yeah, boss number three uh, called Float Stinger, uh, which is a quite a cool fight, actually. I quite like it. There's a certain rhythm to it. Um, he can and sting this, us. This is the adult version. Yes. <laughs> so we'll do a few little strafes. I'm going to try and space my shots out a bit as well. Or yeah, this five. guy kind of has a cool. This thing. That wasn't we let too count some shots there. He has kind of a cooldown mechanic where, uh, if you shoot too early, if you just if you just blast, if you just spam shots, he, you're not going to do a lot of damage to him. So you want to like wait a little bit. So we do a little strafe. So it gives a little cooldown, so you can keep doing enough damage as you kill him with enough shots. Basically, normally takes between twelve and fourteen. You don't want to go over fourteen. Uh, because you want to keep your your shells, so yeah, we like and we, we like to strafe and just give him some time to recover before shooting again. Because if you spam, you're going to waste too many shots. Yeah, the strafing is really cool as well because it, it helps you time out a bit as well. So you don't have to worry about counting, you know, seconds or anything like that. It's just a quick yeah. strafe, shoot again, and then that that's normally enough to do it. You have you have like a full three seconds to shoot him without, with technically without losing time. But if you go over that, you will be officially losing time. I think that's how it works. So Yeah. I think it's quite a nice fight as well, because if, if you get hit as you shoot him, or it rather, um, it doesn't really cost you too much because you've got that nice recovery in between. Um, yeah. You'd have to wait to shoot again anyway, so it's, it's quite nice. You just got to be careful because it does do a fair bit of damage with his sting, so you have to be careful you don't get stung too many times. Yeah, so we, we took one sting there, which I think, I believe, is the first bit of damage we've taken all run, actually, which is, is very yeah, good for bad. this point. Um, but now we've got the dreaded sewers, which uh, casually, I think a lot of people get lost in. Um, thankfully, speedrun-wise, we, we know the area. We can do it quite well. Nice. Very nice. So there's, there's four enemies down here. Um, probably more like... Oh, oh, that was harsh. Um, I don't think there's any getting rude. past that one. <laughs> he was rude, wasn't he? Um, so I, I refer to them lovingly as uh, Guy 1, Guy 2, Guy 3, and Guy 4. Uh, guy 1 was very nice. Guy 2 was um, not so nice. Uh, guy 2 is actually Guy 3, so we have to go back that way on the way back from this section. But we're going to get a key to exit the sewers or attempt to exit the sewers. I like to strafe here. I know other people like to sort of just turn and run, but yeah, I, I like to the, uh, the comfiness of strafing there. Uh, and you'll see there's 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 creatures hanging from the ceiling as well. Um, I think it's very rarely they can hit you. Um, so as we mentioned earlier, um, having your light off doesn't really affect these guys, unfortunately. If they're going to mess up your run, they're going to mess up your run. <laughs> it's just nice. if they want to. Yeah, he, was, nice. he was nice to me on the way back. I'll forgive him for now. Um... <laughs> Also, yeah. these guys are so fast on hard as well. It's just ridiculous. Oh, they are. And they they do change their positions between difficulties as well. So uh, for hard they mode... They do, they do. Um, if you're doing, I think, 10 stars is the main one, you'd notice it. Um, the the second guy isn't actually there. At least on the on the way... The way through it. I think on the way back, he starts to appear. Um, the, the sewers, you know... I think these are well well looked after sewers. There's a little bit of green around, but They're I think pretty I could, clean. I, I'd, I'd spend a night or two down here if I had to, you know. Um, <laughs> not that I particularly want to spend nights in the sewer, but if you had to, yeah, it is better than some hotels I've stayed in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what hotels have you stayed in, Mac? Um, not very good ones, apparently. Um, <laughs> Oh yeah, uh, I like to turn the light off for this bit because there's, uh, I call them roaches. I don't know what the actual name for them is. Uh, I think they're called creepers, if I'm not mistaken. Creepers sounds right, actually, yeah. But nobody it, calls them creepers. No, no. Uh, roaches, I think, is the common thing for them. Yeah. Um, but I, I turn my light off for them because uh, I, I don't think they're light sensitive, but I just tend not to risk it. Um... Now, I don't know why Harry 
um, was was so um, enthralled with that little bit of sewer water there. It might be because there's a key in there. Um, but I, I do appreciate his dedication to finding his daughter. Um, that he'll literally stick his hand in sewage uh, to to try and find her. It's very cool of him. Uh, quite like James from Silent Hill 2, uh, sticking his hand down that nice toilet to, to get a wallet. <laughs> um, you do have to sort of kind of step back at some point and question uh, who are these people and why do they do the things they do? To find their loved ones. They will stick their hands down areas that they should not be sticking their hands down in. Yeah. Um, apart from Heather, she's 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 kind of cool. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that that's done. We uh, we're now yes, we've making got a romper way. coming up here, going into the yes. resort. Yeah, um, there's there's quite a few rompers coming up actually. Uh, this one is normally okay, uh, and I say normally okay. Uh, he can. Be a bit excited. No, he's fine there. I think. I kind of hear him. He's he's too far back to make any difference, though. We're about to walk through the resort where there's, I think, what I assume to be about 100 rompers at any given time waiting to, to pounce on you. Uh, it, it's more like free rompers. There's a particular line that you can take where you don't really have them worry you for this next section. So I like to sort of count like 11 or 12 steps here and then turn my light off and then just aim Harry left a little bit. Uh, this is an area where if you're not familiar with it, doing it in the darkness can be a bit of a problem. Uh, you, you might find it's a bit disorientating. Uh, you'll also notice as well that the frame rate has tanked quite a bit. Uh, it's very common for this game for the frame rate to tank in a few areas. Now, thankfully, I'm playing on the NTSC version, so the frame rate is a bit more stable, but you'll find on the PAL version, um, it's probably a bit less agreeable. It's like slow motion. Yeah, yeah. So while you can run this game or this category on the PAL version, um, I wouldn't recommend it because it's not as comfy. But if it's all you've got, then yeah, by all means. Very nice. That was one of, that's one of the worst movements in the game, getting into that boat. Yeah, very um, awkward. And uh, leaving it is quite fun. It's just a nice little strafe to the left, turn the light off. And we turn the light off because we have our best friends in the world, uh, the Rompers. Believe it or not, they are here as well. Um, and this is quite a tight area. So you can you can hear him. He's, yeah, okay, good. Uh, him being excited paid off. And there's the other one. I've had it before where they've actually chased me down this entire section. And uh, Chase me, um, chase me. Chase me, chase me, <laughs> and uh, that was that was not fun. Um, I think that was a PV pace run as well when that happened. Um, I think this is when I was gunning I for uh, well. sub thirty one on any percent. Um, and yeah, they uh, they did that, did me dirty. So again, this area you want to do this in uh, as much darkness as possible. Uh, again, really just to offset any issues you might have with uh, the the air screamers chasing you down. Uh, also, this is a fun little door going into the lighthouse. Harry yes. will just decide to bonk it if he wants to, like there. There we are. And there's nothing you can do about it unless you want to slow down. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the bonking's not too bad. It's like, I think it's, it's up to about a second or so. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, something like that. I also, I, I love this game to pieces. I love the design. I love the atmosphere. I would just like to have a chat with whoever designed this lighthouse um, with tank <laughs> controls in mind. Uh, <laughs> you'll see that I'm kind of having to make Harry walk every now and then just to, just to make him go down a bit easier. That is the lighthouse done. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's any other games where I've, I've played where I've been as annoyed at a control scheme and an area both at the same time. But just the design home one, in general. Yeah, that particular area pips it. Um, Probably a top 10 list of, of, of that somewhere. A very obscure list. Um, now this dog is nice. Uh, so the dog that spawns there, he normally spawns on the way in. Thankfully, uh, on the way in, we managed to do a little bit of kind of manipulation. Uh, so he didn't spawn. But way out, he's always there. Now sometimes it'll be down on the stairs. 
other times it will be out of the way like it was then. Yes, a nice RNG there. Very nice. And so a sword uh, two isn't uh, half as long as first time we go around. So you just it's it's a very simplistic run through here. Yeah, I think it's uh, about there are some scratchers and there is a mumbler here as well for the, you see him for the first time I mm. think unless you go to the do the coffin side quest. That's it. Yeah. Sure. That's another uh, version difference here is the, the NTSC versions. I think, apart from uh, the Japan version, uh, you, you'll have the, the grey children, but the uh, right. Japanese and the PAL versions will have these mumblers, that enemy that we just saw on the side there. Yeah, but that guy is always there, I think, on every version as far as I know. Yeah, I think so as well. Oh, yeah. there's another guy. Oh, there two of them. Nice. A lucky mumbler. <laughs> He's blessed this run, same as JC yeah. did for the BCR. Uh, so coming up, this is where we'd normally do the amusement park skip. Uh, PAL players uh, will, will know this area quite well. Uh, you'll also see quite a lot of slowdown here. So that enemy, we'd normally use the red liquid uh, or the aglophotus on to uh, basically skip this entire section and kill Sybil. Uh, for some reason, that creature, uh, that, that larval stalker, uh, is credited as Sybil. Don't quite know why. But as a speedrunner, I'm very thankful. Um, but we are now, yeah. We're gonna we're gonna say hi to Sybil. She's not too happy to see us. She's a little bit possessed. If you have the Aglophotus, uh, you can actually uh, save her. This is quite a disturbing part, I find. Nice. Nice. That was a part one done. Very smooth. Um, yes, so Sybil will shoot you. If she shoots you, she does a lot of damage to you. On any difficulty. And you'll notice that I have to drop my gun after six shots. Uh, because... Hey, nice, very, very nice, nice. fight. <laughs> um, yeah, so after six shots with the shotgun, uh, on easy mode, you have to reload it. Um, now, the best way to do that is just to drop your aim button and re-aim. On easy, that, that's a reload. Um, whereas I think on other difficulties, you have to actually uh, physically reload it, either through the menu or by trying to shoot again. So, easy mode is very nice. Uh, now that Sybil's dead, we're entering nowhere. We're going to see a nice uh, image of Alessa. So, IIRs in chat, this if you've got final part. <laughs> this is the final part of the game. And it's nowhere, it's just all over the place, basically. It's just, it's a... Uh... A mixture of all of everything you've seen in the game so far. Ooh, it's a hospital. It's very uh, surreal. Yeah, my favorite, personal, my personal favorite part of the game too. It but, is. Uh, I, as a speedrunner, it can be very confusing. When you're learning yeah. it. I think casually, it's not uncommon for people to spend you know a couple of hours here trying to figure out where to go and what they've got to do. Uh, whereas in the speedrun, it's about what seven minutes, I think, if that. Yeah, less than <laughs> ten anyway. There we go. So that's a nice little pickup there. Um, you can kind of miss that hitbox a bit uh, if you're sort of too far to the left or too far to the right. Uh, I often will call Harry hamster-eyed Harry, um, <laughs> just because he, he does have the vision of a hamster at the best of times. Um, and we've got our Zodiac puzzle coming up, which is quite nice. So this is where you've got to count the limbs on the, the creatures, and then you'll, uh, you'll put in how many limbs they've got. I got stuck on this for ages as a kid for the first time. I didn't know what was happening. So I think that it's a little bit misleading with one of them and you think, oh, it's this number. And then it's, it's not. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then alert puzzle. So let's try and do this quick. So when you're on good pace and you're doing these puzzles, these aren't particularly hard puzzles, but when you're on good pace and you're trying not to choke them, it's very monka. Very. Um, three, three of them in quick succession. It's sort of like a gauntlet, really, this this final bit, um, both in-game and as a speedrun as well. It's sort of yeah. everything that you've kind of been doing through the run up to this point. Yeah. It's sort of like a final test, if you will. Uh, there's a lot of movement tech as well. Uh, there's a particular point uh, where we had to like dodge a lava stalker coming up. It's, it's quite comfy once you know how to do it. Uh, also, I love this. Harry's just kind of staring at a clock. Um, I don't often do this when my clock is bing bonging, uh, but Harry's a—he's made of different stuff. 
I mean, he doesn't take he's any curious. damage from that, thankfully. He's curious, yeah. He's like, oh, what is the time? Oh, it's uh, it's Stone of Time time. It's like me doing a Stone to Zoo run. What is the time? <laughs> Clock RNG. That's what he's doing. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, final puzzle of the game. Nice. Um, in my head, what I do there, and this is something that Saf put me on to, actually, uh, is I like to go through jingle bells in my head. And um, if you press it the helps, buttons... I swear. <laughs> it does, it does. If you press the buttons to the tune of jingle bells, um, you'll never fail it. Never. Unless you're aiming wrong. But as long as you're aiming right, it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's very nice. Yeah, you want to shoot her really, really close as well. Otherwise, she can take a while to fall on the ground and die. So you want to be safe with this one and just go right up into her face before shooting her. Yeah, and she's quite agreeable. She'll she'll go down in two shots. Uh, and unlike other games in the series, she won't worry about... Um, oh, I meant to unlock that door. Whoops. Um, that's another thing. You that need to have your light on to unlock doors. Um, yeah. Otherwise, Harry can't see the locks. And, uh, oh, this this next bit. I love this bit casually. Um, Where's the dagger? <laughs> where is the dagger? Um, but seeing this casually uh, with people that don't have the Ring of Sacrifice and they're taking the sword, the weird tentacle Cthulhu monster in that fridge will uh, obviously peek out and unfortunately do you massive harm. Um, I think even speedrunning as well, depending on if you've put the ring on first or you've pulled the sword out first. Um, you can still sometimes get caught out by that. Who likes jelly beans? There's 39 flavors. Uh, what flavor do you guys like? Harry, my guy, he likes rust flavor because he drops them all on the floor. Um, but we do that <laughs> to get a key. <laughs> um, which is this, one of the final keys. This is how keys I open me. jelly beans as well. Honestly, it's same. The, the floor adds taste to them. Harry's he's adding one extra flavor. Uh, there's actually 40. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got our final dodge of the game coming up, uh, which is called Nowhere Dodge. Uh, so I'm going to try and angle this right and turn my light off. Nice. Got past them. Very nice. So there's That's... a little trick we do there just to, we try and hug the trolley, just like aim to the left of the trolley and kind of brush off it. And it's a nice little strat. Uh, works maybe seven out of 10 times. Yeah, uh, it's don't exactly know highly why, consistent. but it's just better position than just going for the YOLO, going hugging the wall. And uh, I definitely recommend it even for like top, top runners. So, And we're about to enter the uh, sort of penultimate room. Uh, so there's a little bit of lore dump here uh, about Cheryl and the Lesser being two people of the same half. Um, but because we're speedrunning, we, we don't need to know that. Uh, we uh, should know there's nothing in there. and whatnot. That's it. Half the soul is lost. Yeah. Um, so final puzzle door. It's where we're putting all the items in. Uh, again, depending on how you do this, if you sort of mash X, you'll examine the door again, which you don't want to do. Uh, so I like to tap X and then my inventory button to, to get straight through. Um, yeah, final stairs and then final boss. So time's coming up very soon. Uh, we're going to meet Cheryl. The entire game we've been running. Uh, trying to win the Father of the Year award. And uh, here she is, in all her glory. We're going to take four walking steps. We're going to wait for her to charge up an attack. And then we're going to just blast her. And that's time. Time. GG's. Oh. What a run. <laughs> Thank you. I think that might be PB, actually. That felt very good. That is very possible. So, yeah. Uh, sure. Oh, that's good RTA. Yeah, I think this uh, very well could be IGT PB. Uh, yeah, sped up voices. <laughs> sure. so we can't skip this cutscene. Uh, Harry, uh, very upset that he's he's done Cheryl in like that. He had no choice though. He just couldn't catch up with her. No, <laughs> only was a bit faster at the start of the game, right? And there's a the sped up music, which I'll, I'll just skip because uh, I think that can get DM'd the aid, but that bit should be fine. And there he is. He was there's dreaming Harry. all along. Um, very sad. And we've got bloopers here, uh, which 
always fun to show. Um, I can show these or I, I can skip straight to... Sorry? You can watch them. Uh, you went, yeah. like, really in rest mode, so... Time. <laughs> um, so yeah, just sort of going through all the characters you meet through the game. Uh, Michael Kaufman, who we, we see in the hospital. Um, there's a side quest to save him as well, but we avoid him. Uh, unless you're doing good plus, in which case you don't avoid him. There's also a very creepy smile coming up from uh, Cheryl, which I just... Every time gets me. Who smiles still like that? Still not as bad as Dahlia, though. The Dahlia one's pretty cool. The Alessa, the uh, thumbs up. But I love this one. That's Alessa saying, good job. Good run. Dahlia's going to give us the PB kiss. My PB for this is a 3301. So as long as the time at the end of that is is below that. It's like when you're at Visit for Christmas. <laughs> Here he is, the main attraction, Mr. Mason himself. The Chad. I love the sly smile and the uh, the little arm swing he does. Look at that. he knows what he's done. <laughs> daughter? What daughter? He's been a good dad. He has. <laughs> oh, hey, wow. That is a big PB. That is uh, 3229. Very nice. 32 seconds PB, I think, actually. Hey, big wow. congrats. You'd love to see the it. Marathon PB. Thank you very much. <laughs> well done, sir. All right. Now, that, in, now that, uh, that we are at the end of the run, though, uh, a couple of questions. One, do you have any uh, shout outs you'd like to give it all? Yeah, Anyone? absolutely. So first of all, Saf. Uh, Saf is a very, very good friend, very good runner of this game as well. Uh, he he has actually world record in this category. Uh, so do check Saf out. He's good people. Um, lots of people as well. Uh, like you've got Death Tropes, you've got Aaron, you've got Bo Rizzle. They're all very good people to watch if you like watching this game too. Uh, and of course, you've got myself. I run this too. That's the that underscore that's queasy. Um I think, yeah. Uh, thank you, Eck, as well, for the opportunity for this as well. That's really appreciated. It's very cool well, to have done yeah, this. Thank you. Yeah, thank uh, you for having us. Yeah, it's been a fun run. Uh, as well, if anyone wanted to find you on Twitch or anything else, where can they find you? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, twitch.tv forward slash Mr. Underscore McSqueezy. Uh, that's where you'll find me. I'm live most days doing things like Silent Hill. And, uh, Saf, do you want to do yours? Uh, no, I'm, I'm good. You've pretty much said it all, man. Just uh, <laughs> GG's and a great run. Uh, you absolutely nailed it. As I knew you would, so. All so, right. Great run. That was a good time. And I just want to thank you both again for doing this. Uh, for right now, uh, we're going to be setting up for our next run. Uh, our next run is going to be quite long, so it's also going to be our final run of the night. But it will be a long one. It will be continuing the theme of dads. So, uh, while we get ready for that, we're going to be taking a quick wellness break. This is the time to stand up, touch your toes, stretch your legs, do what you generally need to do, and, you know, not die of blood clots. Uh, while we're getting ready for that, I just want to say as well that if you're watching this over on YouTube, uh, come on over to twitch.tv slash games done quick. Uh, if you're interested in looking at our live content, we start most nights at 7 p.m. Eastern and weekends at 1 p.m. Eastern. We'll be right back. All right, we are back from the break. Welcome back, everyone. Hope you enjoyed that great run of Silent Hill 1. Honestly, it's one of my favorite games of all time, and I just love being able to show off that game when I can. Uh, it's a classic game, uh, has the world's best dad in it, and uh, continuing along with that trend of great dads, uh, we're going to be doing another pretty fun game that also features a pretty great dad. Uh, there's a lot of dad games again. Uh, there's actually a lot more than I probably could have even chosen in the show, but a lot of them get quite long. But uh, one that I do like that I don't think a lot of people remember being a dad game is The Evil Within 2. Uh, it's a whole game that's pretty similar in beats to Silent Hill 1. Uh, also, before anyone asked, uh, I wasn't going to put Artie Village two shows in a row, so that is why that's not here. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're going to see what I'm talking about with The Evil Within 2 uh, with Abukamu. So take it away. Hey guys, my name is Abukamu. I will be showcasing The Evil Within 2 for you uh, for Father's Day. And also just a massive shout out to all the father figures in the world. This run is for you. Um, yeah, today's category is gonna be uh, new game, casual, glitchless. Um, three separate categories. All the difficulties kind of have their own strats. There are a lot of glitches in the glitch category that kind of change the fundamentals of the run. And 
new game. So no infinite rocket launchers, nothing like that. So we'll go get head started. We're going to have aim assist enabled, which doesn't work for keyboard and mouse, but it'll come handy in the future. So we'll get ready in three, two, one. So Evil Within 2 is the sequel to the Evil Within 1, but it is fundamentally a completely different game. It features open world. It's less linear. I think it's less scary, honestly, than Evil Within 1. Uh, it's a completely different engine. Spoilers, it sucks. Um, but the plot's very much the same. It follows the uh, protagonist from the first Evil Within, uh, Sebastian Castellanos. This has taken a couple years after Evil Within 1. So right now we're just kind of uh, reliving a flashback where, uh, spoilers, his daughter is trapped in the house. So we're going to go try to save her. If we do save her from this burning house, we don't actually have to run for the next two and a half hours. So I'm going to try to save her so I can go to bed. If you land, you're really under estimate. Damn it. No matter how fast I go. Never fast enough. The one time I'll work and you'll get world I'm record. <laughs> oh God, upstairs. Yeah. Not a lot to explain. It's what we speedrunners like to call a whole W game with a decent amount of tech. You're gonna get to see some cool like tips and tricks that we abuse the engine in, and but with the tricks, there's also a downside as well. Um, we're gonna crouch right here. It actually skips a whole dialogue prompt where Sebastian stops. But yeah, like I said, with a lot of the cool things we can do with the less than ideal engine, there are a lot of bad things that come. A lot of gunshots won't register, but here's an example of kind of a cool trick we can do. You can actually interact with any prompt if you are directly looking at where the um, uh, prompt is. So you'll be, do you'll be seeing a couple of like Five feet skips here and there. So, where are we? The best part of this game, and no, I'm just kidding. This game is really great casually, and this is, I would say, it's a very fun run overall. So, it's not a very popular run for, but for those of you who do want to get into it, feel free to hit me up on Discord. Unfortunately, the community is a little bit um non-existent, but I'm always up. My DMs are always open, so. It's a good way of learning the game. Right yeah. hmm. So uh, what made you want to run the Evil Within 2 anyway? Um, I, my first game starting to speedrun were uh, the Resident Evil games because I kind of wanted to stay the horror. Um, and then I kind of thought about other horror games I really liked. I saw the e I tried actually running the Evil Within 1. And it was... Not that fun for me, but Evil Within 2 was a lot, because it was a lot more open, I think the tech was a lot different, I would say. Uh, I'd started running this game. And uh, the world record holder for this, Stevie Blue, uh, I think he's shown up in a hot fix before. Um, yeah, he was, was on uh, last year. Mm -hmm. He was such a great resource, such a nice dude. I don't think he streams as often anymore, but I hope wherever he is, he's doing good. So. The fun fact here, you actually do have to be holding W. If you stand still, the credits will not roll. Huh. You have to be running in a set direction. I've actually tested this because I stood still. I was just like, wait a minute. Do I have to be holding W? And the answer is yes. She's gone. Our little girl is gone. No, no, no. I'll never accept it. You won't help me, I'll find out the truth. Also, because it is just me and Ek, if you guys have any questions in chat, I will... I've run this game plenty. Feel free to ask them. We do read them, and I can also relay them back. I think Abu might have chat open as well. Yep. So Actually, right I have here, a question to... Oh, yep. go ahead. Simple tech, we're gonna look down so we don't get stunned from the flash. Saves about four, three, four seconds because Sebastian, you know, didn't get blinded, but anyway, go ahead. Hmm. So my question is, I know this game has a decent open world, so what weapon, how is weapon routing going to look? Uh, much like any horror shooting speed game, we're going to be sticking to the uh, crossbow and sniper rifle, pretty much, I think. All right. <laughs> yeah, to nobody's surprise. There are no rocket launchers in here. There are explosive bolts, which we'll, uh, we will be using, but no rocket launchers, unfortunately. 
Just like Beacon. Should be a way out. Why couldn't my memory just make regular doors? So this intro, 10-14 minutes, is a little bit slow. Um, for those of you not familiar with The Evil Within 2, um, it's, ve it's very The Matrix-y. You're in a simulation, pretty much. If you obviously die in it, the simulation, you die in real life. It's very psychological. There's a lot of kind of twists and turns, you know, a lot of optical illusions that happen. So it does get confusing, but obviously for speedrunning purposes, we know the tech, we know the puzzles, we know what to interact with where and when. So should be pretty straightforward. So. Is this the right place? So, yeah. Stamina is a very big part of this game. You see the orange bar to the top left. Uh, for now, we're going to be just toggling what our sprint. So if you ever run out of stamina, you're going to be forced to walk and eventually stop. So we're going to be managing our stamina just by tapping the sprint button. And dealing with that. So in terms of tapping, I guess this is more of a, I guess a minor question, but are you like mashing it? Is it like rhythmic? It is exactly... 105 BPM. <laughs> no. All right. No, it, sometimes, no, as all you have to do is, um, obviously you go a little bit faster when you mash more, but pretty much once you start running out of stamina, you, you'll get into the habit of uh, spamming it a little less and less, if that makes sense. One of the search team. And obviously if, you're, if you can just run to a certain point, you're just gonna hold down the sprint button, so. Someone tried to block the way out. Uh, not a lot to talk about. Um, I kind of want to introduce the uh, plot points as they appear. But for now, um, at this point of the story, uh, your wife has left you, feels bad, man. Um, and your daughter, who is presumably dead, is apparently seen in this simulation, or she technically powers this simulation. So um, Kidman, who you saw earlier was the woman in jeans, uh, tells us, hey, you need to go into the simulation Find your daughter, bring her out. And we said, okay, yeah. Pretty simple so you, story to start with. Oh yeah, very simple. I unfortunately cannot save my daughter as fast as uh, Silent Hill 1, but you know, it's still a reasonable amount of time. We're gonna be introduced to the main villain of the series. Stefano, I think is his name. I don't remember his last name. But he's got pretty cool t powers, he can teleport. He's super edgy. He's like one of those really artsy edgy guys. Speaks with an accent. Probably wears a fedora on ironically too, but. We're gonna creep around him so we don't Shit. get killed instant. Amazing engine. But there's an example where you can see just the model colliding with a couple of stuff, but. Interact with the door, not get caught. And there we go. So I don't remember it exactly, but if I remember correctly, there's some degree of um, stealth attack where I think like if you approach the walls or mm -hmm. something, you can do something. So if you crouch to cover to a wall, you don't you end up not using stamina. So the better I would say 90% of this run is just kind of getting a feel for where to uh, crouch to cover, as you kind of see me run at a diagonal and just. Um, You'll see the stamina bar kind of fluctuating in and out, and that's just me um, uh, crouching to cover behind certain things and not behind certain things. That's why uh, in the HUD options, if you could turn on the center dot, that's on my screen, it is so helpful because the crouch to cover is kind of the center of the wall where you want to be in. Not much a lot to talk about. Um, the Evil Within 2 is a very beautiful game in a very kind of horror way. It gives a lot of tributes to um, a lot of other uh, horror games. Namely Resident Evil and some bits of Silent Hill, but... It is very morbid, though. Weirdly enough, um, with the tech of, uh, you know, taking cover on the walls to keep your stamina up, that kind of reminds me, uh, I want to say a couple weeks ago or last week, I was last, uh, yeah, a couple weeks ago, that's right. 
uh, we had on the Ghost Rider Tokyo, and that had a weirdly similar strat where you kind of want to stay balanced on the rails to keep your speed up, which is kind of weird. Yeah, so it's the same uh, makers, uh, Tango Gameworks. Uh, I think they used uh, Unreal Engine 4 for Tokyo Ghost Rider. I haven't played it yet. It's in my Steam directory. There's a it's game a called... Game. Yeah, there's a game called League of Legends taking my time with it. I'm just kidding, Sorry. unfortunately. But uh, I do need to play it. I do kind of find it funny, though, that because um, this engine, which is called the STEM engine, because STEM is the simulation that Sebastian is going in, was so flawed, they just said, yeah, we're going to Unreal Engine for our next game, which was uh, Tokyo Ghostwire. Oh yeah, by the way, we're running from a boss. <laughs> I forgot to mention that, but... It's called the Guardian. So some cool tech up here, there's actually going to be a jump scare where the Guardian's going to insert her chainsaw through the vent and you kind of fall backwards because you get taken aback and you got to kind of run from it. But if you walk backwards through the vent, Sebastian will fall backwards, which is technically forwards. And because you don't see the chainsaw, he never takes damage from it, which is kind of cool. But you will hear it though. Are you so saying falls. Sebastian vented? Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I saw Sebastian in electrical. Oh, well, that's <laughs> no. what the chainsaw has to come here. He's... Yeah. Um, but no. oh, I do have a question from chat asking, what's your favorite all-time horror game to play? To play a speedrun or to play? Let's go with both. Oh, I don't hear it. Hmm. I like very... I like. I love horror games that have a lot of ambience. So I, I'm just going to go with the recent... I do love all the Silent Hills. I do love most of the Resident Evils. But I'm going to go with my current favorite is Visage. Play. I know there's a good wave of speedrunning in that game a while back. Although it's been a bit more boring lately. Yeah, the material in the game is very... Controversial, so I would understand why it's a lot of runners don't run it. Because they wouldn't have the opportunity to showcase a bunch of it because it deals with a lot of controversial topics. Uh, my favorite game to speedrun will always be RE5 because that's probably one of my first games I've speedrun. I did a co-op with a couple of people, namely DE Cosmic, who's a Devil May Cry speedrunner, and Spicy TV, the village guy, who's been on here a couple of times too. But Anyway, we escaped from the Guardian. We will be actually fighting her later, but you know, this is the whole intro, what's going on. Um, haven't gotten a gun yet, so we can't technically fight. Speak of the devil. Where were you when I needed you? Yeah, no, massive shout outs to Resident Evil 5 and all the people and all just all the speedrunning community I met. I don't speedrun as much anymore just because speedrunning was a hobby I picked up during the pandemic, but uh, I still love all the guys and I'm and I'm going to SGDQ this time around too, so I'm excited to see a lot of them in person, what did I get including you, Ekt. Kidman. It should be fun stuff. I'm pretty excited for the event. SGDQ is fun, although I'm a... Uh... I'm definitely a bit nervous on it, just saying. I have a weird GDQ story. Um, I think we're two shows away from it, but last time I was in SGDQ in person, I went to the hospital, so I'm uh, hoping that doesn't happen again. Oh, where'd you put the other guy? In the morgue? Yeah, it, was, uh, <laughs> no, it was an inanimate object. Oh. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> no. Right? Uh, yeah. We're gonna be introduced very uh, in a Resident Evil fashion to the first zombie of the game. We'll just call them zombies. Infected, whatnot. But that's what they look like. Tentacles coming out of their head. We're gonna run because we're speedrunners. And another cool uh, system, instead of tapping to um, run, what we could do is actually just hold sprint and just aim the hand and just uh, spam aiming. And what this does is actually, there's a split second where the stamina bar doesn't go down. We're going to be looking down, because um, 
if you look up, there's a giant sign that says New Hope, and Sebastian has to admire it and look at it, but for now, we're going to be conserving stamina and just running forward. We should be getting to a checkpoint in about a couple of seconds here. So like I said, this game is open world, but for speedrunning purposes, we'll, you'll see maybe 20% of the game, if that. So for those of you who haven't played this casually, I would wholeheartedly recommend you guys play this casual. It is such a great game. Um, we're going to be skipping a lot of bosses, a lot of optional uh, side quests, a lot of uh, uh, quest lines as well, a lot of NPCs. But you can find that all through casual gameplay. So. So I uh, see a question in the chat that's pretty good, and especially given that, what, it's like 14 minutes to get to the run, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, what's the biggest reset point in the game, and how often do you find yourself resetting? This right here. So, hold up, so, I'll go underestimate. Sometimes this table right here will fling itself, because the physics are weird, and just block this hallway completely. And you just can't walk through, and you just... Say, well, I guess I'm not speedrunning this game today. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> the engine is really inconsistent with a lot of small things, so. Also, um, in chat, um, there's a, I guess, a topical question. Are the, is the team called the Morbius members? You might say it's Morbin time, but yeah, they're called Morbius. Oh, no. No way to suit yourself. Let's pair up our communicators. That way, I, yeah. Anyway, as you're saying, uh, yeah. Um, this is O'Neill. He's kind of like the um, main dude we talk at our HUD. We're gonna be interacting with the crafting bench once. Uh, by interacting with it, uh, it'll give us the option to craft on the go, and that's not what I kind of wanted to do. Uh, yeah. If you craft on the go. Instead of at a bench, the resources unfortunately cost 1.5 times what it would cost at a bench. So the game kind of does force you to um, be conservative with the ammo. Even especially in the casual difficulty mode. They're all immediately in this open area. There are maybe four or five quest lines you could start, but we're just, obvi we're just obviously going to gun for our daughter. So. It looks pretty far away, but it's the only lead I've got. God, I hope it's Lily. To practice uh, the stuff, the sprinting stuff, the covering, the section I would say is probably the most token area to where anyone who speedruns this game kind of just knows their um, regular spots where they're gonna crouch to cover, so. Yeah, keep the questions coming. I mean, I'm just pressing spacebar and holding W, you know. Have you played this game casually, X? I have, yeah. I, I enjoyed it. Uh, at some point, I want to run the game. Uh, but usually, whenever it runs, like, long... Uh, it takes a little bit more uh, build up to work up the courage tree, you know? Gotcha. In your casual playthrough, did you fight a boss named Anima? I think so. It's a, it, you'll wreck it. It's the ghost that just kind of floats around, like sings a song. Possibly. I, I don't remember doing a lot of the side content, though. Yeah, no, that's like one of my favorite bosses in the whole game, but unfortunately in the speedrun, we don't ever deal with it. We're going to be... Um, so if we ever use a health syringe, it actually recovers your stamina. So at certain points of the game, we're actually going to want to take damage. So we're able to use a health syringe uh, to essentially for the purpose of uh, regaining stamina. Because there are a lot of prompts in this game that you cannot interact with if enemies are alerted to you. And uh, this first ghost of the past is an example. If there were zombies on me, the ghost would be there. So. Are you here? For those of you who have seen the glitched run of this, obviously we'd skip all this. So what the glitches of this game essentially entail is you fly across the map and skip a lot of stuff, whereas I walk to it. 
And that's one of the tech that skips about a third of the game. And another glitch tech is... I don't know what you would call it. You kind of clip through the walls by changing FPS. You kind of uh, cover to cover in a corner, and then you'll eventually kind of go through the wall, which skips a lot of holdout sections. It skips a lot of command prompts as well. So. There's actually a cool glitch right here that I'm going to try to just show off. It's not consistent, and I don't know what causes it. But I've gotten it once. If you land it, I'll have to change the category name to one glitch. One glitch, no. So apparently Sebastian can move in the middle of that cutscene. So instead of running around the back of the restaurant, I've been able to let that cutscene play for like three seconds. And I've walked through the wall during the cutscene. And I've done it once. And I had my run rejected because they were like, this is a glitch. So. They really are that strict, huh? Where did you run? This is a great engine. Mm. <laughs> no, but that was actually intentional. Um, if you interact with the garb, uh, the model will kind of propel yourself forward. And I actually do need to go this way. So. What the? That is not a glitch, technically. Another signal. I'm gonna have to change the category name now. One <laughs> glitch. <laughs> no, like I said, because the community for this game is so inexistent, the rules are very non-existent as well, so apparently that's not a glitch, so I said okay. We go around the long way because if you go around the short way, there's actually a cutscene that plays and a new enemy is introduced. I just call them the dogs of this game, because they're pretty much dogs. And um, they get really annoying, so we're going to be picking up some crafting materials, some heals, and just run. Yeah, this is when, like, you'd see me start aiming a little bit more because my stamina bar is kind of running out. It's actually, <laughs> so you want to know kind of something funny. I actually submitted this for uh, SGDQ, but in my description of the game, I said instead of Sebastian Castellanos, I said Ethan Winters. Let's try this again. Where are you? I mean. <laughs> I just thought that was really good. I didn't it's not know entirely until, wrong. Yeah, I didn't even realize until Maxi commented. He's like, "Kamu, what have you done?" And I was like, "What do you mean?" He's like, "You put Ethan Winters." I'm like, "Honestly, same game." They're both dads looking for the daughter. Pretty much. Hope it's not Lily's. Yeah, this ghost kind of takes you all around. But we're obviously we just kind of know where the end, uh, the end of the trail is going to be. So we're just going to be heading there. This is Chekhov's bottle. It'll become very relevant later in the game. Kudos for those of you who get that reference. I think the original reference is called like Chekhov's gun. Yep. So. Let's see what's what. How important it is later. Oh, thank God. I still consider this part of the intro because it takes zero emotional investment, zero physical investment on my end. Right, it's mostly just going from uh, location to location for right yeah. now. I would say starting from. Oh. It looks like she's I guess it's probably when you get to the sewers, it will likely start to um, hit that point of being more. Actually, more might be dynamic. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. Even right here, a little bit is actually not too bad because you can get screwed over pretty bad. Okay, so most games, if you're on a ladder or you're hitting a switcher and you're in a cutscene, you have iframes. In this game, you do not have any iframes. If you are in a cutscene and you get hit, you will die. Solid oh. engine. Oh. So, uh, hopefully, hopefully uh, we don't get that right here. So I will be playing it a little bit safe and burning these guys behind me. So right here, as I'm hitting the switch, I can actually get grabbed. I did get grabbed, okay. But that bottle did come in handy. Because you heard it crack and it uh, auto-defended for myself. 
Oh, the Chekhov's bottle. Uh, that wasn't supposed to be the bottle, but we'll take it. Sometimes I get a. Sometimes I don't get grabbed, but. Chekhov's yeah. premature bottle. Chekhov's premature bottle. I will need to pick up another bottle. In the future. Lily came from upstairs. She probably crawled through here. If we go fast enough, there's a glitch where the enemy despawns here, and it's really funny. He just you see a zombie just roar, yell, and just disappears. So hopefully we can get it. It's kind of funny to show off. She's gonna be okay. Find her. Also, I suppose for reference sake, once again, um, glitchless is primarily referring to the idea of we're not launching Sebastian eighty feet in the air. This is amazing RNG. As you can tell, we're getting... That was almost really bad RNG. Because of the objects, uh, if you recall the table I brought up earlier, those containers right. there fly in a random direction, they could actually kind of soft lock you and block the ladder. So, that was actually really close. There's a surprising amount of things that just prevent you from progressing. Mm-hmm. I'm glad they haven't happened. Nice. Oh, yeah. You speedrun games. You know, eventually everything does happen, so. Yeah, so we got the uh, the shotgun right now. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, until we get the sniper rifle, which will be late game, and the crossbow, shotgun's going to be our primary weapon. We're going to be walking through a one more kind of psychological section and um, some cool tech here. We actually are forced to walk unless you cover to cover. So you're going to want to cover to cover. It kind of looks like I'm walking janky. I promise it's not me. I promise it's how the engine thinks a human should be walking. So. Kind of teleported off to a new area. Stefano is kind of just toying with us at this point. But, uh... the hell? So, like, you're a veteran in uh, horror survival games, right? Correct. Yeah, so one of the things I'm kind of opposite for is, you know how people handgun zombies, shotgun for bosses? Right. In my head, I always thought you shotgun the zombies, and like headshot the bosses. That makes sense with the pistol. So that my- It really depends for a game. Yeah. So right here, we're gonna be forced into an arena with three of the dogs that we didn't get introduced to earlier, but they're gonna be introduced now. Uh, to get out of this section, you normally have to kill all three of them, but we're speedrun, so we don't do that. Or you have to kind of, while they're pressuring you, you have to move a crate to a safe area and climb over the fence. But the crate itself, there's like a small frame or pixel of it that actually connects to the edge of the container we do need to climb up on. So we'll take a hit there. Um, and just climb over the crate. Because normally you got to move this crate, but if you kind of diagonal this right here. Nope. Right there. Okay. Kind of just, you kind of uh, can just climb up the container without ever having pushing the uh, smaller garbage bin. Another very cool interaction. Even though the enemies disappeared, I'm forced into like a cutscene. They could still hit me. So, considering enemies can hit you in cutscenes, how generous is this game's like checkpointing? Very good. But um, I when I first started running this game, I wasn't used to the idea of uh, checkpoint resetting to manipulate AI. It's only when I started kind of running Village that uh, Captain Ezekiel, who runs a lot of RE7, uh, introduced me to the concept of checkpoint resetting. So I actually m made like uh, two, three checkpoint resets that I abused to manipulate AI behavior. But um, you do lose time, obviously, because the game has to auto save and you do start a little bit behind where you were. So a lot of times the checkpoint resets aren't worth it. But there is actually one that's kind of really cool that I discovered actually on accident. Uh, while prepping for my GDQ submission. I haven't seen one of these in but we're going to be getting the crossbow, main weapon of the evil within 1A and 2.
With the crossbow, on uh, how does the ammo work with that? Do you get like just random bolts, or is it kind of like the first game where it's going to be based on scrap? Yeah, it is based on scrap. We do find uh, there are a couple of bolt pickups. Um, obviously, the shock bolt is probably the most useful, the one that just kind of stuns all the enemies because we're speedrunners. Uh, but a lot of the stuff we do have to craft. We did kind of pass an enemy, kind of look like a naked lady with eight arms. Uh, they're called the Lament. If they scream, it completely alerts uh, all the zombies to your area. And it also drains your stamina to zero. So we do not want to be alerting those. But yeah, I consider this the end of the intro. So this is, like you said, uh, kind of the sewer-ish area. Right. You could have maybe so, but I couldn't have given you this. The passageways are my community. You'd never make it through alive without this deadly gas. Leak. We're skipping a lot of this conversation, but he pretty much says the so strongest signal is coming from City Hall. There's only one way to get through it, and it's through the sewers. To nobody's surprise. So we'll be going through there to find the strongest signal. Uh, the best part about this open world actually is. I think a lot of games actually have started adopting this, but the open world actually does get harder and harder. If you do get introduced to a new enemy type, it'll spawn in the new world, or in the open world as well. Same for bosses. If you actually beat a boss, or get past the point of the story where you're supposed to fight it, uh, it'll spawn in the open world, which is, I think, a really cool mechanic. There's an enemy type we kind of uh, skipped introducing. It was called... I call her the Witch, because she's very similar to the... Uh, Left 4 Dead 2 Witches. But she's just a stronger zombie, kind of just runs at you. Kind of spooky. But now, for now, this open world does have the dog. There's a dog in this tree. It wasn't apparent. They're running out of stamina. I've seen one question typed in chat here. Um, what game do you do not? What game do you dislike speed running, or any games particularly you don't like to run? RPGs. <laughs> That's the easiest sense? question. I, ex I I always get asked that question. It's like, what games do you not run? And I, I'm kind of taking a break from speed running. Hold up, I'm gonna want to shock bolt this switch ahead of time so the lament doesn't. Okay. Uh, RPGs are a lot of games I don't like speed running, and no disrespect to any of the communities that do speedrun it, but like games like Persona, Yakuza Like a Dragon, I, you know, I I think it ruins the point, like you want to enjoy the game. Persona takes like, I think I say a 20 hour run. <laughs> and then it's at that point, what really is a speedrun, right? Because the biggest argument is New Game Plus is a true speedrun, because it technically is the fastest. But a lot of uh, new game purists say, well, that's not a challenge because you're just holding W and infinite rocket launching everything. So I think that's the beauty of speedrunning as well. Um, everyone just has their own idea of what it means to be impressive and to go fast. So True. My answer to that question is always um, the phrase that simply says drinking battery acid. Mm. It's uh, not very fun, I can imagine. It does not seem like a very fun thing to speedrun. You let me try, or not? You let me try. You try and let me know. We're gonna be trying I, to I will. It's the thing I dislike most. And I only say that really just because it's a quick way to go. Like, I don't know, man. I, I usually like to focus on like the positives normally. So that skip I actually got first try. You actually have to shoot a bolt underneath the door, and it kind of just allows you to skip the whole area. It's not consistent. Believe me, I tried. We're gonna be pre-killing a lot of these zombies here, so we don't have to fight them later. Imagine the reason why it skips it is because on the other end is the um, like the electrical panel, right? Yep. Another cool trick. Normally you'd have to interact, but if you're speed running, you could just. Uh, there's a whole dialogue that kind of goes through there. Ooh. I'm so bad at puzzles. There would be a whole dialogue that goes through, but. Uh, this. Oh yeah. I didn't. Shot. The shotgun. This is what the? Where did you come from? This is a set area. You gotta kill all the mobs before the doors unlock. So we're gonna pick the most efficient way. The reason I put a shock bolt there is just for safety purposes. Sometimes she spawns early.
Oh, I guess a good question right now pertaining to the run that I actually have here. Uh, I noticed you've been killing a lot of enemies now. You're starting to collect the goo. You're starting to uh, get a lot of the upgrades here. Mm -hmm. um, how is the upgrade uh, leveling system going to be looking once we finally upgrade our character? Um, we actually aren't collecting the goo. Um, I know in the Evil Within 1 and uh, the other difficulties collect goo for upgrades. Uh, right. For those of you who are not familiar. But we actually, I'm actually just collecting gunpowder. Uh, gunpowder uh, is able to craft ammo on the fly. And because we picked the sniper rifle really late into the game, we actually don't have sniper rifle ammo. So pretty much the purpose of collecting gunpowder in this run is you're going to be uh, just creating as many sniper rifle bullets as you can at the end. So. Funny story, I didn't know you could slide down the ladder. I climbed down it. I still got world record with it, but my friend was like, you know, you could slide down the ladder. And I said, oh my goodness. But yeah. This part of the game is actually really cool. Um, it forces you in a first person point of view. And surprisingly, a lot of people loved how the first person lived in this game. The mechanics are pretty much the same, but um, it forces you in the first person. So actually they ha added a patch later that you could play the whole game in first person perspective. So obviously the question is, so why don't you run it in first person perspective? Um, first person is a little bit slower because um, even though it kind of plays like an FPS, uh, there's a bolt changing animation. So when you do third person over the shoulder, bolt changing, there's no animation. Sebastian just changes it from the gun. Uh, but first person, there's a whole animation, so which is why we don't do it. Everything else is relatively the same. There's a lament right here. This is another very big reset. Cause sometimes she's right behind you, sometimes she's not. Because you can die in a cutscene. I, this is my, I, this is actually my least favorite part of the game. I'm kind of waiting for audio cues where she is. Okay. Okay, perfect. So normally she's right behind, sometimes she's right behind you as you're doing the switch. So as you finish, um, as you finish doing the switch, she actually comes up, hucks acid on you, and that's a one hit kill, so. And then that's when I tell myself, yeah, that's enough of the evil within for today. That's the end of the sewers. We're going to be making our way to Town Hall, where we're going to be fighting our, well, I guess our first uh, story required boss. Uh, I can't remember the name. Obscura. So. I still can't believe the, like, the company that the, the Sebastian's working for is called Morbius. Yes, <laughs> I have nothing um, to say to that. I, I just I was enjoying the whole cycle of that. Uh, I guess of that meme. <laughs> Here it is. What time is it? My way back into Union. It's more it's than time. More than time. And you know the best part of that meme is like because they don't ever say it twice. <laughs> well, well they, okay, that's pretty funny. But the fact that they never say that line in the he um, but so what when do you everyone mean he doesn't say it. So when everyone types it's Morbin time, there's no perspective of how you should say it's Morbin time. Do you say it like Power Rangers like it's Morbin time or like do you I don't like, even know it. It's, it's Morbin time. <laughs> Oh, that's the best part. I pictured it in Power Rangers, like it's more than time that they just started. I think that's the original that. intent from the uh, the meme that uh, started that whole thing, right? It, like, cause it's morphing time or whatever. But yeah, and it's kind of wild. I guess just on the cycle of that. This must be City Hall. I, I really just I do just love the fact because a lot of people are like, "Oh, is this astroturf? Is this like a fabricated thing?" And then they released the movie again, and then it bombed again. <laughs> Which, that's been my favorite part. <laughs> uh, yeah, I remember seeing that they were just like, oh, this is the time. People might watch it because of the memes now, but nope. The fuck is that? Maybe they'll release it again. Yeah. So we're going to be introduced to the Guardian again. Uh, when you play this casually, I think 99% of the people, including myself, killed her. 
We're actually not going to kill her. There's a back entrance we can go to. That kind of just skips this whole boss fight. Really? Yep. Huh. <laughs> yeah, and you actually get a Steam achievement. It's called going through the back door. Kick. But... Let's see. I'm curious on this. Because yeah, I always thought this was like a mandatory fight. There's no other way around. Mm-hmm. I mean, kind of. It's kind of set up like it, right? They have explosive barrels everywhere. They give you shotgun ammo. Right. Yeah, but nope. I saw the speed run and it said, oh, that's the thing. It's a very specific line and there's a bit of RNG because normally she can just catch up to you and um, slice you with said chainsaw. But... Doesn't matter if you hit that. So we're actually going to want to trigger this one because these actually turn into explosive bolts if we just uh, pick them up. So. Those boxes are breakable. Mm-hmm. Okay, we got pretty good RNG. Sometimes she's right behind us, but you could just see her kind of slowly turn the corner. I'm just chilling. She's just running at us, but now we're safe. Uh, if you take over oh but yeah yeah if you take that path normally it's pretty free but let's see if I comes down to you know there was a back door though I didn't until the speed run so I guess over under in terms of GDQ events and I, I see a good thing posted in chat about this uh for anyone who's either attended or watched the GDQ you know very very often there's a certain donation message which is uh the orb mm-hmm uh, how many donation messages do you think are going to not only mention the orb, but the morb? I'm going to be real. I'm going to be enjoying myself in the audience. So. Oh, it's fun. It's a fun time. I, I like going to GDQ events, and uh, hopefully, uh, you know, God willing, there's nothing wrong. We'll see uh, the next event happen. Yeah, I'm kind of a GDQ boomer. I like the old memes better than the new memes, like Lamp. Uh, um, I like the urn. All that kind of stuff. So the orb stuff, I was just like... I wasn't really on board, but it's just me being old. So. It's getting old now, though. It's been there for years. Has it? Yeah, I think it's been there since, like, maybe 20... Like, well, let's go 2019, 2018. Yeah. <laughs> Which, it's getting up there. I guess I'm not woke, as the young kids say. Maybe not. <laughs> and, uh... The run is live, yes. But chat is pre-recorded. A lot, okay, so a lot of the sections like a very escape room thing. Um, there's a whole puzzle. Uh, it's just a couple of puzzles, but like I said, it's a speed run, so I'm just going to kind of breeze through them. They normally give you hints on how to do this. First one is just uh, imitate the painting you see on the wall. It's a lovely lady, even though her face is scratched out, with a necklace and a rose on the table. So we actually do need to imitate that. this this camera's so old must mean something so that's the first room kind of opens up this whole second area we're gonna want to be uh crouching to each of these paintings and as they light up it triggers the next room because obviously it says appreciate the art so you actually kind of do need to stop in front this section is timed. Um, you could lose anywhere up to like 30 seconds here, but we found a way to force the next interaction. If you kind of approach this newspaper clipping and open it from the side, and you hear that shutter click, it actually immediately activates the next sequence. Because normally in the past, what we'd have to do was just kind of wait until we heard the shadow or the shutter click. But actually, by interacting it at that specific angle, um, it um, just takes you to the next room. So. If you pick it up head or head on, you still have to wait. So I don't know why it works like that, but it's all game design. So we're just going to be waiting for some dialogue prompts here. 
The door's gonna spawn right there, but we can't be looking at it. So how normal people just do it is just look here and then just turn, you know? But I'm, I like doing this. It drives my viewers crazy. Oh no. <laughs> Another one. But what's he after? Nobody's had anything nice to say about that, so. We're gonna shoot at Stefano here, so it kind of just triggers the phase. <laughs> Normally, you kind of have to walk to him, but if you just shoot him, it actually just closes the doors, or at least. Here's an example, if I ran out of stamina, you're kind of forced to go slow. I feel like I shouldn't have to say this in the middle of this game, but this game's pretty graphic, so if you're squeamish about blood, body parts, and all that. There's a, an expectation when it comes to the show that these games can get pretty, uh, pretty, pretty heavy. So while that cutscene was actually playing, I was actually moving back left. It kind of puts me closer actually to the next door where I need to go through. Just a lot of small things, so it'll be right here. Because normally you just spawn in the middle of the room. I actually do need to go to the restroom really quickly, so I'll let this cutscene play out. It's kind of a cool transitional cutscene that introduces the boss. Hopefully the boss doesn't kill me, but I'm just to going to go take a piss, so it should be the worst. But I'll be right back for a second. Oh. Please connect an authorized terminal. You got this, X. <laughs> uh oh. These things happen. Communicator. If I remember correctly, I want to say this boss fight's actually just straight up waiting, too. I don't think this boss fight's actually a... I think this is like the defusal of a bomb or something. Yeah, it's a time-based thing. Oh, that's why he left. Yeah, so this whole portion is, um, you literally wait. That's it. Uh, so I guess I'm, I'm playing in the game for right now with all the stellar gameplay as we go. Uh, you can see how it goes. But yes, this is, uh, just the, the waiting portion of the run. And it's pretty good as well, actually. Um... It's we do uh, like to promote wellness here. This being able to stand up is pretty good. But uh, you are quite literally missing nothing as we speak. It is a waiting portion. Uh, we have a cutscene to also uh, just make sure uh, he has enough time to go to the bathroom. And as well, you don't have to worry because this game, I want to say, actually uses an IGT. On uh, the world of speedrunning, there is a lot of IGT communities out there, and I believe this is also one of them. Welcome back. Hello, hello. I forgot this boss fight. It's only just the counter going down. Yep. You, gotta be kidding me. you can only do this in this difficulty, but this is a very hard boss fight that I will be doing with one hand. So, well, shortly once the timer starts counting down. So what you want to do? So what you normally have to do is um, fight the obscure through multiple boss phases. You got to damage her enough where it um, she kind of phases in the next stops the timer. But we found out that in phase one. If you just are in a certain range of her, she's going to be kind of forced to attack you and never stop the timer. And you're asking yourself, she's eventually going to kill you, right? Well, no, because on casual difficulty, you auto-regen once you're in danger. So the next hit should take us to danger, but you will see me recover enough health where I'm back to fine, if that makes sense. All right. Well, that worked out as well. And I believe uh, chat should be back from the minor uh, ad break that we had from that as well. I think we have that during the waiting to come back. <laughs> oh, yeah. So to reiterate once again, uh, this boss fight is we run down the timer. So Avi was just going to be waiting in range. Are you holding a plushie? A... This is a Demigorgon plushie. Yeah. Isn't it kind of cool? It is. Normally in the, like uh, when I would stream, I'd normally check my uh, text messages here or something, you know? Oh, yeah. Here's a Demigorgon plushie. At about 10 seconds remaining, I'm gonna run and go, just go pick up a lot of the other mats in the room, so. Cause at that point he can't stop the timer anyway. Would you believe that's never happened before? 
<laughs> Maybe. Yeah, that's actually never happened before. Oh. Normally he doesn't, uh, stop the timer. Okay, there we go. Hmm. I don't know what caused that. You learn something new every day with this game. But normally oh, what's supposed to happen... Yeah, 10 seconds, He she, she kind of runs around and doesn't stop the timer, but she actually didn't even stop that really close. She stopped that with four seconds remaining. That was kind of weird. I'd understand if it was one second remaining, because then I kind of played it close, but... I was gonna save my own ass. But what am I supposed to do now? If he's gone, leave Lily here. Where did he take her? Should give Kibben an update about this. Shit. Maybe I'll get a signal outside. Yeah, that's the Obscura, uh, but because we technically beat it, uh, we're gonna be actually running to the Obscura uh, in the open world a little bit more now, so. We're gonna be healing to uh, get some stamina. Some kind of science experiment, and then they have the nerve to send me in to clean up their mess. It's like some kind of sick joke. Obviously, Sebastian still kind of doesn't know what he's caught up in. He just knows that um, Stefano kind of has a grudge against Morbius because he was not selected for Morbin time. And um, yeah, he just doesn't know. But for all he wants to do is technically just go save his daughter for now. So. Gotta figure out where he took her. Think I might have just figured it out. Not doing a very good job of hiding. It's almost as if he's taunting me. Well, if it's a fight he wants, he's gonna get it. I just have to find my way there. O'Neill, it's... Yeah, so right now we're on our way um, to fight Stefano, so we're approaching um, near the end of the game. Or are we? Possible to truly say. Maybe I put an estimate that was one hour over. But yeah, for me, this run, I, I like this run because it has a lot of intense parts, a lot of slow parts, uh, kind of mixed up. So it's just, it's a very, I would say, relaxing run to just perform. A lot of my viewers would say this is probably like my token run that I'm most known for, besides be Resident Evil games. But. More cover to cover. We're gonna be running past a couple of enemies. See though, if we rescued our daughter in the house fire, we could have all uh, ended the stream an hour ago. It's been enjoyable. Right, it would have been nice and easy. Force X to play Tormented Souls or something like that. No, it'd be a dad game. Hmm. Resident Evil Village again. I wish you didn't run Village. Uh, I had issues with my computer. I ran Village for a little bit, but one patch after it came out, it pushed my CPU to like 120. I don't know why. Yeah. I have an i7, so I was just like, yeah, sure. But yeah. Uh, for those of you asking what my time was, I did have a world record in this. Some, uh, Stevie Blue, the previous world record, uh, contested and beat it. He's maybe 30 seconds ahead of me. But it's to the point that I didn't run the game seriously ever since he contested me, so I'm not really, I haven't really contested it, but he's a really great runner, though, so. Anyway, introduced to a new boss. It doesn't really have a, I, I don't remember the name for this, but... I just call it the Sock Monster, so... If you could put two and two together, kudos. But besides that, um, God, it is a one-hit kill. Maybe I can sneak 
but we're still gonna run past it, so. If we take a very precise line, we actually don't get hit. So obviously the game developers didn't expect you to just run by it, so. the event we shoot it twice two or three times during the scripted event do they cap your like if you ran out of ammo would you have ammo for that yes they give you six in the chamber so well that's good yeah. uh if you miss those six then well at that point you might be playing the wrong game or the wrong difficulty we're going to be introduced to another npc here her name Hoffman might be Hoffman um, she's also another Morbius member yeah it is Hoffman she's another Morbius member who's trapped down here she's pretty much just kind of catching up um, she's kind of explaining Stefano for us obviously even though she has an assault rifle and everything she doesn't want to help us instead we got to do everything ourselves so that's what we're going to go do If you play this on console instead of a PC, these loads actually take 30 seconds to a minute. Oh. So, which is why um, we needed an auto splitter for this game. Because different pe people's hardware would actually load a lot slower there. So, we actually do have an auto splitter that uh, stops uh, when you're in that area. So. How does the IGT work anyway? Because I know this game does have some form of it. I think you see the credits, right? Yes, the, the I screen. yeah the IGT is actually hold up. Uh, we're gonna need his axe. This is also Shekhov's axe. But yes, the IGT is actually really good. It's one of the few games that if you checkpoint reset, the timer's still going instead of uh, resetting, which is kind of cool. Because I know a lot of the at least Resident Evil games, uh, you. Keep, if you checkpoint reset, the in-game timer kind of resets. So that's why they have their own auto splitter that, you know, just keeps the time going for them. Yeah. So we're gonna need to destroy these two specific paintings. It is set, it is not RNG. This whole town has seven, eight, 20, seven, eight, 20, I don't know. That's a big range of paintings. I don't know how many, because I just know where the two are. And once you destroy those paintings, you're able to enter the Stefano arena, but for now, we're gonna be running there. My favorite part about the paintings is the, uh, I think once you complete the mission, you can go all the way back to the beginning of the game and get the one Easter egg cutscene. Mm -hmm. That's a it's witch. Just a fun one. Yeah, that's a witch. She obviously takes a little bit more health to kill or bullets to kill. We're gonna be picking up a shotgun pouch here. That helps us live. Get her back to dodge her. Uh, normally, I wouldn't actually have to dodge her, but for some reason, the dialogue, I was close enough to the dialogue that Sebastian decided he needed to pause for a second, so I actually did need to um, kind of stutter step. Here's the first painting. We're doing the paintings in a set order that obviously is the fastest. But for now, we're going to be taken back to meet the Obscura again. Uh, me and Stevie do this completely differently. He takes what we call the a YOLO strat. He just runs straight at the gate, puts down three explosive bolts, and hopefully the Ex Obscura doesn't hit you. Before you get the gate open, using three uh, electric bolts. 
but I have like a little bit more safe way. It loses like three seconds, but at least your run's not dead at that point, so. And the run's not down to three seconds, so. So as soon as we pick the key, Obscure's gonna come in the direction left or right, and we're gonna use audio cues, and we're gonna go the other way. It's right, so. So yeah, perfect. So we went to the left, and it's not even that much of a time loss. I would even say three seconds of stretching it. But because we went the other way around, he's nowhere behind us, so. And you will always get this off. Normally what uh, a lot of other runners would do is they would just run straight at him, and he'd be right on your tail as you're trying to open that. And if he hits you, obviously, the you have to redo the game prompt, so. Very, very funny story here. I didn't know you had a flashlight in this game. Oh, there it is. What? <laughs> How? <laughs> I didn't know you had a flashlight in this game. I got very don't, good. Don't you, like, start with it? Yes. Okay, like I said, I got... You don't know how many times I reset here, but I got very good at it. Here we go. <laughs> And my screen, I think, is a little bit darker than what, like, stream shows, because I don't like bright lights too much. So for me, the wires were really hard to see. But I do remember one of my uh, viewers was like, you know there's a flashlight for this section. I think it's... I don't, I don't even know the button for it. V? It is V. <laughs> He's like, oh. I kind of got it's kinda, used to it. Yeah. It's kind of one of those neat things. Um, like, you know, you play the game so much, you just don't think about some of the basic things. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember one good example was, um, I think a few GDQs back, uh, during the horror block, there was a runner for the game, um, you ever hear of Vampire, uh, Masquerade, Bloodline, something yes. like that? Like, um, yeah, um, the runner who did that game, uh, I think some people were wondering about the casual aspects or the story beats, because apparently it's a really cool story game and an RPG shooter kind of thing, right? Um, I think the runner genuinely just said during the runs, like, I have no idea what this game is about. I just like it because it plays like Half-Life. <laughs> and they just like the tech. They didn't know anything about the actual game. They just, they love the tech. To be fair, I, to each their own, but I kind of feel like you should honestly play the game, ca every game casually if you're going to speedrun it. It's oh, a pretty yeah. open hobby, luckily. Yeah. By the way, we uh, ran into the Guardian again. We just ran by her, so... Yeah, I I don't think there's ever been a game where I've sped run it first, speed ran it first before playing it casually. Sometimes, like Star Fox sixty four, I think I played it like last time I played it was in maybe middle school, and I start and I sped, speed ran that. I think the big thing but, with Star Fox communities as well tends to be the score attack these days, because I know mm -hmm. GEQs opened up uh, score attack and uh, general skill showcases as well. Like I said, to each individual runner, I don't really, for me, that's not a speedrun. For me, is A to B fastest. So I, I did yeah. the uh, blue route and red route for that game. But yeah, also, no, um, yeah, that's actually a really cool run too, Phil. Yeah. Um, I see the question has been repeated a few times, but he'll have been asking once again, uh, why are you like aiming and like uh, jumping onto the covers while running? Hold up, check calls the axe. Of course. <laughs> anyway. Um, oh. And uh, yeah, stamina conservation. Because if I'm just holding, or well, I can't sprint on this section. But if I'm just holding the sprint section or the sprint button, my stamina just goes down. But if I continuously aim, there's like a split second where the stamina doesn't register that it should be going down. So on parts that I have to run super far, I will uh, be spamming that. It becomes very obvious, like in this next coming section uh, coming up. So. So the axe is pretty powerful, huh? It's a one-shot kill of this. Uh, for the first three difficulties, mine is Akumu. So. So right here actually is a very good example of the ADS and like this whole section, I'm gonna have to run all the guardians on my butt. So you'll just see me ADSing. You'll see me kind of baiting out a swing from the chainsaw and then uh, shringing for uh, HP. That's both of them. Should have done the trick. But I have not taken any damage, so I cannot syringe. So hopefully I just get really good RNG and I don't get hit. So you'll assume for now you'll see me cover to covering. Try to send as much save as much stamina as we can.
why you see me ADSing. Kind of just stamina the bar. It kind of just it stops if you look closely. Taking this kind of set path. I don't hear the guardian behind me, so it's pretty good. Actually, so that's pretty good luck. Sometimes the guardian is right on your tail, so you have to kind of bait. You have to stop and bait out an attack and run forward, but it's a little messy sometimes. As a general question, I don't know if uh, anyone's maybe tested it. What does an axe do to like a boss? There haven't been bosses where you're kind of able to walk up and uh, just hit them. Stefano in particular, he teleports a lot, so you have you get that split second to get a shot off. Um. You expect me to bend. Yeah, most bosses have like a cheesy uh, or cheese. How we get rid of them? But I haven't actually really tried it though. Hmm. Just trying to think. I definitely couldn't imagine it doing like a ridiculous amount of damage. Or probably like maybe what a, a shotgun. Yeah, I'm just trying to think. Then there's a boss that one shot kills you if you're too close. That's why I know we don't do it there. Stefano teleports around. Maybe. You should ask somebody who runs this game. Uh -huh. <laughs> no. Yeah, no, I don't think... Hmm. I don't think the... I haven't tested it out, but if I'm being honest, I think the energy and time loss running up and hitting it is worth the damage you would have lost just shooting him twice with a shotgun. Anything with a shotgun. Or a sniper. We're actually going to checkpoint reset here. So, um, this is a scene where there's a whole spotlight going. If you're in the spotlight for like more than two seconds, it's an instant death. Uh, because there's a cutscene here that plays, um, you're caught in the middle of the cycle. But if you load the game, you could actually just run through because it resets the cycle. So. The spotlight will actually be closer to us when we reset it, and we could actually just run through it without uh, proccing the insta kill. So, right there. Otherwise, you kind of have to crouch and just uh, wait for the spotlight to run a cycle. Here, there's nothing you do. You just kind of have to go slowly behind it. So. Bit of a uh, villain monologuing. That's what villains like to do. We're gonna enter a room where we just get a bunch of mats. And we're gonna be ready to fight the final boss of the game, Stefano. I'm sure there's nothing adverse to Stefano, right? Maybe I just had a really good run, and maybe I'm super underestimated. Maybe? I see a new world record where you end the game on a, after I have to Stefano, right? World record is when you save your daughter in the burning house, unfortunately, but... Oh, of course. That's the super world record. The tech hasn't been found yet. It's the second best thing. You gotta find the Stefano tech. And yes, the guy's name is Stefano. Uh, that is the boss fight coming up. Two phases, extremely precise locations. I'm gonna be, if you tell, if you stand in a certain area, he will be kind of forced to teleport to another area. So I will be shooting and standing in certain areas for both part of the fights. And I'll explain a little bit of the RNG that could happen. So this is pretty set. I'm gonna aim to the right because he's gonna actually teleport to the right, like right here. So. Game didn't register that shot, amazing. Uh, so this is the boss fight that we were uh, talking about earlier with the Stefano, where he'll teleport while you move. Yep. 
bit unlucky there that one shot didn't register, but... And you kind of want the audio cues of where he's spawning, so... It's a really cool fight. That's the first phase. If that first shotgun shell had registered, I wouldn't have to shoot him twice with the handgun bullet, but... Yeah, relatively clean first phase. Um, this is the second phase, which is pretty much the same thing, except now there is a giant being in the sky who can ten drop a giant tentacle on you. We're going to be resetting it so we get a guaranteed set uh, attack pattern. Be getting hit there, so we kind of just teleport through. That hit was unintentional. He should spawn to the right if you get bad RNG. Okay, that's not too bad. He did a weird attack. There's a lot of audio cues based on where he's teleporting. This is the one attack you kind of don't want him to do, where he just wastes time and teleports around the place. Sometimes he just runs at you, which is kind of the attack you want. Yeah, I'm short of shotgun shell, unfortunately, so... I'd normally be able to shotgun him. That's a cool attack. Yeah. Yeah, normally I would have been able to kill him, like, with one shotgun shell earlier, so I might have lost 20, 30 seconds there, especially getting grabbed, but... Yeah, relatively clean, I mean... That's a problem with the engine sometimes. You, it shouldn't happen, but sometimes shots don't register and it's just really bad, unfortunately. I haven't had it happen in a while, but it's happened, but we beat Stefano on world record pace still. No, this is not world record pace, so. But yeah, uh, surprise, surprise, Stefano is actually not the last boss. Uh, it turns out he was actually working for a higher power named Father Theodore, who kind of controls fire. So we're going to be introduced to a whole new enemy type called the... I think they're called the Molten. They're just fire zombies that can regenerate super armor and everything. Um, if you played Resident Evil 4, if you're familiar with the Regenerator, the Molten are pretty much like the Regenerator, which is really annoying for speedrunning purposes. Coming up here is actually a really cool step I uh, found out accidentally while practicing this section. I'll kind of explain it when I get to it. But normally what you have to do is you have to activate a switch. Um, there's going to be a gate you have to lift up. It's a spam F. Uh, don't get hit, otherwise the gate drops back down on you. Uh, but it's pretty much a jail block, a prison block, where a bunch of zombies will come out and attack you. But I kind of found out by resetting it a certain amount of times, you kind of, all the zombies just stay asleep, so. That's kind of cool. Uh, I found it out while just practicing this, so. There's certain zombies we're actually going to want to kill ahead of time. Because they do not sleep. And what's really annoying about the harpoon gun is, so for your gun, you'll see that your center is where the dot is. For the harpoon gun, it's its own little center. It's like to the left, which is very annoying. We're gonna kill this guy. But I can't shoot him through the bars. So we're gonna activate, we're gonna hit the switch, uh, activate a checkpoint right here. 
Looks like I can use this. And we're going to be resetting the game seven times. Not six, not eight. Seven times. Why Maybe seven? Seven. I was really... <laughs> so we're going to open this door. So normally at this point, as soon as you kind of pull up, make sure. As Normally at this point, all the prison cells open, a bunch of zombies charge you. Normally what you have to do is put down a bunch of shock bolts and pray. But if you reset it seven times, two... I think you could actually do it six times, two, six or seven, three. The enemies don't actually spawn. I found that out while practicing this bit, seeing if there was a better way to get rid of the RNG in this, because honestly, it's a lot of uh, praying that certain zombies trigger the electric bolts. So I'll do it one more time after this though. If you do it fast enough with the auto splitter timer, you only lose like two, three seconds. Obviously real time, it's a little bit more time, but it still saves. So all the zombies in this cell, right, in these cells, are not waking up anymore. There's zombies in those cells up ahead. There are zombies to our right, right here, but nope. Just get scot free. And it saves a lot more time in the future as well because uh, we actually save shock bolts. Well, so normally you put down a bunch of shock bolts at each entrance and you just kind of do this, pray that nobody comes out and hits you. But... Yeah, that is actually one of the cool texts I found out. Um, uh, checkpoint resetting. I think it applies to the rest of the game as well, but there aren't a lot of sections where we kind of just have to deal with RNG, so that's, I guess, one of the only sections that where it saves time, so. It's pretty good to have, and also, I think once you learn it in one game, it can really start applying to much more than that. What's going on? So, while Father Theodore is talking right here, you could actually cover to cover each side. Well, actually, uh, it's going to come up momentarily. But if you cover to cover, you actually lose time because you get closer to him. He restarts the whole dialogue if you get too close. So you kind of just want to walk slowly. And despair led to self-destruction. So if, if you reach him too quickly, he will say you are your own downfall twice. But the audio clip for both will play and it will you will have to wait for both of the clips to play before this whole cutscene happens. Happy, fa happy Father's Day, early Father's Day with all these messages on the wall. <laughs> that's, uh, that's every day, right? <laughs> So you couldn't save her, then on Father's Day, you get the number one dad mug. <laughs> You're worthless. You, your wife left you. <laughs> and then Father's Day happens. Here's to yeah. you, number one dad mug. This is not my biggest reset section, but this is my least favorite section. I think the other runners will agree to this. Because the Molten are like regenerators, some, you'd have to get really lucky to one-shot them. And getting a crit on their head is like a 30% 30, 30 chance. So that's already hard enough because they they can regenerate. There are three of them in this room that you have to kill. You're going to kill them with a crossbow, which obviously doesn't align with your center thing. So it's a lot of small pieces coming together that you just absolutely hate. Sometimes you just land all three crossbow shots. Sometimes you don't land any and you just pause the game and you end stream because you just are frustrated with everything. That's a 30% chance. Ah! Clean oh headshot. Yeah. I jinxed it. Oh. 30% chance. Oh god. It's just hard to aim because the it doesn't align with the center piece, that's why. 30% of the time. Oh time. god, don't hug me. Yeah. Okay. 
believe it or not, that's actually one of the more cleaner ones. Well, yeah. Actually, three shots, three kill, or three headshots, three kills. Because sometimes their head kind of is partial, so they're actually still able to fight. And they just regenerate it back, so you kind of have to just cycle through and uh, wait. But uh, at least with the shots I landed, it was actually pretty nice. I feel like if I just landed all three of those shots, that would have been really clean. But yeah, because the crossbow doesn't align with the center dot, it's so confusing. Well, whereas the gun does, so. A uh, relatively straightforward puzzle here. You need to turn uh, these four dials a certain amount of times. It's a uh, 212. Right, so. Two. You know those splits where you gold once and never gold again? Yep. I've gotten three clean headshots with arrows just like bam, bam, bam. I'm like, yeah, I'm never golding that again, so. Never gold that again. So two, one, two, one. And that opens the gate to the next area. There's gonna be a whole cutscene that plays. And we're gonna be introduced to another character. Uh, team of Morbius, but she's actually gonna help us out because she has her own assault rifle For those of you who are Resident Evil fans This game pays a tribute to what we call the cabin section in each game. We will be having our own cabin section We're gonna be doing a wave by wave a kind of zombie invasion and uh, We're just gonna have to deal with that just kill zombies as fast as we can no tricks kind of random spawns Hopefully things go well Until they're dead or we run out of ammo. What the hell is going on here? We can talk later. Oh. It is random where they spawn, but it's also random how good your AI is. Sometimes she just kills everyone for you. It's really nice. So for this cabin, is this kind of like a... Because there's always two cabins to me. Uh, I, I hate cabin now, but when you get them, it's either... Is it kill enemy cabin or is it be in the room for a blank amount of time cabin? It is a kill enemy cabin. Oh, I hate those. So a lot of their spawns are RNG, so I'm kind of using audio cues and like small visual cues in the fog to kill them as fast as I oh, That guy scared me, just popping out. So um, I guess I can explain the idea uh, between the two for the general quiz chat here. Um, for cabins, uh, it, you know, as uh, Abu mentioned, it is a trait coming from RE4. Um, the section required you to kill a blank amount of enemies while sort of defending a stronghold. Uh, many games do this, and normally the two variances are kill enemies, which is traditional in this one here, where your timing is based on how quickly can you kill the enemies that come to swarm the cabin. I think RE4 is like 30-something. I'm not sure how many Evil Within 2 is, but it, it's a lot, consider that much. Yeah, yeah it's just wave-based, so... Yeah. Um, time cabins are kind of like if you played RE3 make, you might remember that one. Um, it's a, you're waiting. It just, you spend blank amount of time in the cabin, you just need to survive. Uh, Evil Within 1, 2, I think, also has a, uh, a time-based cabin. Because you have to wait for, uh, Joseph to open the doors. So what you see I'm doing, I'm actually trying to shoot their legs twice, which causes the leg to break, and you could just insta-stomp the kill. Because sometimes they're, uh... Bodies are a little bit of uh, bullet sponges, so I'm just playing a bit safe. What the hell is that noise? Oh shit! Watch out! Who are these things? Doesn't matter. 
We actually blow up that barrel ahead of time because if he pops up, he, he uh, his model could actually blow up the barrel and kill the AI. So it's just safer to kind of just um, obviously blow it up yourself. I think that's the last of them. But yeah, that is the cabin, relatively straightforward. Can't really lose. I mean, it's one of those sections you don't know how much you lost time. You kind of just go by feel of how fast you think that cabin went. And, uh, it's part of the run. Thanks. And who are you? No time for 20 questions. My safe house isn't too far. Friendly fire is not on, but your on bullets won't register if they uh, pass through. Take whatever you need inside. I'll be out here. Try to stay quiet. Good ammo drops actually up. You can at least tell me how you know my name. Kidman told me to keep an eye out for you. Kidman? Yeah, she said she would try to get your help if the plan went to shit. And here you are, so... Wait, I'm lost. What plan? Getting Lily out of here. And then, taking Mobius down for good. Any of you guys have seen Jigsaw Killer play The Evil Within 1? He loves doing this, so I get... This is a tribute. Him. Let me guess. The way back to your safe He puts bolts on people's and then makes comments. Oh, like, the bow tie. Yeah. Uh, I love that one. Uh, I actually had uh, Jigsaw on uh, GDQ, one, on one of the earliest shows for Evil Within 1. Uh, I love watching that run. Wait, hold on. Your plan. I, lo I love Jigsaw. He's such a fun runner to watch. Although, Absolutely I don't think he's been, although I don't think he's been streaming lately, so I hope he's okay. But... Uh, he's been on. Uh, I think he just has some... Different hours. Gotcha. One of us has got a lift while the other one crawls through. Got it. I'll Go just. She does have an. She has an electrifying personality. Get your ass through before I drop it on your head. Okay, I've got it. Uh, thanks. Although I could do better. She shocks people with her uh, personality. You need a break after that, old man. The I'm sorry. The current thing is to make puns, isn't it? <laughs> don't, don't ban me from future crits. <laughs> I like making puns. I just made one. Actually, it was your wife's plan. You could say she has an explosive personality. You're really amping things up, aren't you? Mm hmm Oh. <laughs> oh, oh okay, okay. See, the current one went pa like, past right under, though. This isn't the time, Taurus. You know... You should be proud of your wife. She's compelling. Although I wish there was tech for this in this game, because I know you do it in the Evil Within one, because she does her, uh, the character you put bolts on does their whole like walkthrough thing, and you put an explosive bolt on them, so it kind of just clears all the enemies, so they don't have to stop. But right, um, it works very in particular because there's one enemy uh, in the Evil Within one used for I think a boss fight even. Then I'll melee down them. I'm sure it is. Also, yes, um, it's being mentioned in chat once again. As a reminder, uh, the cooperation you're working, or the you know the corporation you're working with, uh, is named Morbius. Ready. So at this point of the story, your wife, uh, really early in the game, your wife leaves you, like in the whole contest because your daughter's dead. But it turns out this whole time she's been working with Morbius uh, to rescue their daughter. She herself has gotten lost, so now you're in the simulation to not only rescue your daughter, but rescue your ex-wife as well. So. Taurus is not your ex-wife. She's a Morbius agent. There's not going to be an Evil Within 3. The assets used for Tokyo Ghostwire were supposed to be Evil Within 3. But because they said it was way too like far fetched to being ghosts and paranormal stuff, they just made a new game altogether. So, as of now, no, they they pretty much confirmed they're not making Evil Within Three. Because after Ghostwire, Tango GameWorks said uh, we're trying we're gonna go away from horror. So. Father Theodore, I just call him Theodore Wallace. You know him. Maybe they'll dip back in someday. But he doesn't want. Yeah, this game kind of resolves everything though, so it's kind of it feels almost forced, you know, if they uh. Similar to Village, I mean, spoiler alert, but like, you know, the main character dies at the end of Village, so if they make it 9, you know, you can't really bring the main character back, you kind of are forced to start from scratch. Uh, I think they can. Yeah. And then he'll die in a volcano. <laughs> Wesker's alive. Remember that? He snuck out at the very end. 
This is but a also, very, uh, yeah, from Ferrari Village, we actually had that on two weeks ago. <laughs> very popular game. So, so it, it works for, um, what's the word? People, uh, if people watch GDQ, they may have seen Village in the past couple weeks. So we're going to be introduced to a new boss here. We don't have to fight him yet. Uh, it's a dude with a flamethrower. This is the boss I was telling you about. If you go up to him, he one-shots you because he just kind of like lifts you up with that. But that's the boss we're going to be fighting moment or in a bit, not actually right away. But this section is RNG. What you're going to do is just run ahead. Don't get caught. Put down a smoke bolt. And hopefully the AI is right behind you. Sometimes the AI dies, sometimes the AI is fighting the nation. Who knows? Best case scenario, the AI is five seconds behind you. Worst case scenario, the AI is blasting away. So. I hear gunfire in the background, it's a bad thing. So. So we're going to be placing a smoke bolt here for a little bit of consistency. I would say that's accurate in most cases as well. Pretty much. This is actually a placebo. I don't think this works. But if you hide behind this tree, I kind of it feels like the enemies don't track you because they're just like, oh, where did he go? Okay, that's actually really good. Actually, that's one of the best RNGs I've had. Sometimes, if you hear starting to shoot behind you, you might as well reset. There's nothing that forces, uh, you can force her to follow you up after that, so. There's no place like home, but a safe house runs a close second. Listen. Don't freak out at the amount of explosives I got in here. They're as safe as cookie dough. At least until I arm them. So what are we gonna do about Theodore? I don't know. He's hot. I should be... What? Yeah, she's she's hot and he'll... If I can... So the... Yeah. How are you gonna... O'Neal. So, pretty much at this point of the game, we have to find Father Theodore, take him down, uh, rescue your daughter and wife. But uh, at this point, she says, Didn't you meet Hoffman? Didn't you meet O'Neill? Why don't we get them all together and we can uh, salt his uh, fort together? So. I did more. Good. She's the good herb. That is so it's the bad. And he needs. Damn. I'll send Kimi. I know. I trust. Okay. Time to get down to business. O'Neill, it's Sebastian. Come in. O'Neill was the guy in glasses. If you recall, the very first safe room we were in, the one who gave us the gas Something mess of the so sewers. So. I gotta try. And but of course, it. it's a you horror video game. Get your explosives and weapons ready. So he's not answering. We're gonna go have to find, uh, go find him. Is there a way into the Merrill from here? Yeah, there's a Mobius computer in that room. It'll take you to exit 72. Great. I'll call. You and sorry to rain down on your print. It's not Morbius. It's Mobius. It. Oh. No, I'm sad. So it's Mobin time. It's Mobin time. is still there. I would say we're about 60% uh, done with the game. 70% done with the game. We're definitely making good time, I think. No matter how many times I run this game, the last split of the game, one of the last splits of the game is a boss rush of all the Evil Within 1 bosses, and I just love the adrenaline just gets kicking. It's so good. So we're going to be dealing with another Switch puzzle. Uh, this one's kind of hard to remember, but I'll see if I can. Between 1, 2, 3, 4... It was all of them. If you couldn't Maybe catch that's that. Why I couldn't contact O'Neill. Hoffman's safe house is nearby. I should check up on her. Hoffman, another you here? his safe house to go to a restricted area of the marrow it doesn't sound like him
this is another tribute to the Resident Evil games. Um, for any of you who have played them, most of the Resident Evil games kind of follow a formula of kind of very decrepit starting area, decrepit second area. But then obviously the final area is a super clean research lab, modern, out of nowhere. So this game pays homage to that as well. So we're entering the research lab area. had extra security for this place. All these tanks. What's this about? Fun fact, my favorite boss's final fight is actually through that gate, the anima final boss fight. But because it's a speedrun, we're not going to be fighting the anima. Well, I do think we get a pretty fun section coming up right now. Huh. Yeah, but it could be more fun if we're fighting a cool boss, but you know. We'll be fighting, a, we'll be fighting the story required boss, you know. Actually, as a category, is there a category that lets you do the optional bosses? No. <laughs> uh, there's only a glitch, glitch. Sorry, glitch, glitch list, new game, new game plus, and then all the categories. There's, like I said, the community's not has never been really developed for this, so it's kind of a shame. What do we have? Uh, so there's no hundred percent. There's no nothing. So. Okay. Let's see what happens. If you're squeamish, look away. Because that drill's gonna, you know. Gonna really get inside his head. Yep. Oh. Thank God he's already dead. I gotta get out of this lab. Bit of RNG coming up here. I gotta do an ammo count really quickly as I'm running. Should be good. Ugh, I'm just kind of short one. I'm short and a shock bolt, so I will be playing this extremely risky. If I die, I apologize. I don't know why I'm short one. But normally what I do is I normally shock these guys. <gasps> I should be fine, right? Yeah, I got a bottle. Normally what I do is put down a shock and just kind of wait for the gate to open up. That actually didn't lose me that much time. But I am down a shock bolt for whatever reason, so... The other parts are much worse if I don't have one, so... So we'll be fighting the flamethrower boss. Um, it is actually... Voices. Reload ahead of time. It is actually O'Neill, who kind of fell into the temptation of Father Theodore, who this whole time is just, like, corrupting. People, so that is actually a new. We're gonna be sh shooting two shock bolts in very specific spots. Oh, well, that second one did not go where it was intended to. That's the one it kill move. So during this phase, we're going to actually craft as many explosive bolts as we can and just kind of perfectly have enough. Why wouldn't that be enough for you? Sometimes it takes three explosive bullets, sometimes it takes five and six, some handgun bullets. I don't know. We don't have an SRT, so it's hard to say. And it's not a DA thing, because I did get grabbed. 
So yeah, that's the O'Neill boss fight. Uh, I blow my explosive bolts on that because in the second phase, he gets extremely aggressive on you, and most of his attacks are one-hit kills. So, uh, if you're ever close to him on phases one or two, it's a one-hit kill, and phase two, pretty much all of his hits are uh, one-hit kills. I would say that's the hardest boss fight in the game, at least for me, because of how inconsistent it is. But yeah, that's the O'Neill boss fight, so... Good fight. It was clean. It was clean besides the fact that he took way more explosive bolts than, you know, the RNG would be on, but... Whatever it is, O'Neill said to destroy it. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I know just how. It's me. Have you finished? I have. Good. Got it. So this is the prelude to the final chapter of this game. It's gonna be this whole existential am i a good dad am i not a good dad am i a good husband am i not a good husband bit i'm obviously with enemies of course but uh tell me something is that enough like tenants i'm good i'm going to check out the equipment exposition it's a lot of whole w's um for me i i say this is the last slow part of the game before from here on to the reddit okay. or 10 minutes of slow, and then the rest of the game is just adrenaline packed, so. This is normally, if I had a commentator on the couch with me, I would have a conversation with him. I would be able to shoot the shit, but. So, what, what happened but, to your commentator anyway? I won't say names. But he legit messaged me and said, yo, but sorry I can't commentate with you. I have a date. I mean, of all the reasons I ever heard to um, back out of a uh, commentary. <laughs> it's a fun one, I suppose. you're here. Well, at least you have a date with Twitch chat. My favorite date. Two enemies we're going to be killing ahead of time and we're going to be placing this bolt here and pray because this explosive guy if he gets within range i'm at full hp so i shouldn't be able to kill but if you're anything but full hp it actually one shots you but he's going to get shock bolted right there Just manipulating stamina, using the audio cues of the enemies. Also, there's a good comment in chat saying, oh, lo and behold, what if he gets married? <laughs> I actually made a joke about that with him, and I said I'd still never forgive you, so. You'd have to tell the story at his wedding. You know, they, these two never met. He was going to commentate on uh, the Evil Within 2 speedrun. Then he, then he left. Yeah, no. But that's the problem with this game. Like I said, the community is very non-existent with this game. I mean, like I said, I'm, I'd be able to help, but I can't really get people who know the game to help me commentate with me. So it's usually people who run horror games that are similar to this, but aren't this game that are able to commentate. So... Well, there is actually an upside um, ice to this situation here, uh, just because with you doing this on Speeders in the Crypt, um, I do know that it just, you know, it helps get some more eyes on the game. Uh, if oh, anyone yeah. in chat ever gets interested in games like this, um, you know, Avu is pretty good at the game. Uh, they're definitely willing to help you out. Um, this run as well kind of serves as a nice tutorial in a way. I think a lot of GDQ runs do that quite well. All my world records are lucky. Or, I mean, uh, of course. I break the game. That's how I get them. But, uh, yeah, no. Um, I would wholeheartedly, the speedrun, I'll be real, there are better. I think there are more fun speedruns. I do know for a lot of people, two and a half hours is a very long speedrun. For me, I prefer it like two hours, an hour and a half. 
I know a lot of people that prefer sub hour. But this game casually is a 9 out of 10. It's so good casually. Like, I would wholeheartedly recommend that you play this at least casually. We're gonna skip this cutscene, but this, it's this whole, Dad, I hate you, blah, blah, blah. You left me. This is why your wife left you. And you're just like, oh shit. Come on, man. Let me get you out of here. A lot of these coming cutscenes are unskippable, so. Just here. So, I would say use this time to stretch. Stretch your legs, stretch your back. Do anything. Don't die of blood clots. Yeah, get some water. Yeah. If you do want to see someone who actively runs a lot of these horror games and the similar horror games, I would wholeheartedly recommend Jigsaw Killer. Jigsaw underscore killer. Very good runner. Although I think he runs on Australia time. So it'll be a little bit late for the US viewers. Uh, also, uh, Jigsaw is spelled with a Z as well. Are you all right? You've been working too hard. No, Jigsaw is a J, bro. Oh, of course. No. Myra? There's this whole scene where you relive your whole, the day your wife divorced you, you read a letter from your divorced wife and then sebastian has an epiphany saying oh my god it wasn't me it was <laughs> it <bothered>. wasn't my <laughs> fault he pretty much just says you know what all these memories it's just father <laughs> theodore using my guilt i think he actually just says that and he's just like it wasn't my fault i was the best dad there was and you're just like okay hold on there buddy you know that's the confidence i want to aspire in life wait a minute everything that went bad I had nothing to do with it. I did have that recently, actually. I think I was running a game and I kept losing. I was like, wait a minute, am I messing up? And then I had one time where it worked. I was like, no, I just lost every dice roll. It's not my fault. So you'll actually like see and hear the dialogue where he's just like, it wasn't my fault. She's right. She's always been right. Theodore uses my own guilt against me. But guilt for what? It's their fault, not mine. <laughs> they took everything from me. My wife divorced with me because Mor Mobius just said, we're going to kidnap your daughter. For those of you who are interested in playing this, you should play number one before number two. Because even though they have very different subject matters, it's good to know Sebastian's backstory, so... This is unskippable, so I use this time to contemplate my existence. Or go to the bathroom, but. She brought you here. Uh, F in chat, please, for Taurus. The only NPC in the game who decided to help us out. Oh. Also, it's weird. So, are some cutscenes skippable and others aren't? This is like the infamous unskippable cutscene, and it's a minute 15 seconds. I wonder why this one in particular is unskippable. I think it's because they're loading the rest of the game. That's because uh, the rest of the game doesn't really ever load, so... I, I, I had thought about it, so... I read the comment that just said Dvorbius. No, no. <laughs> I do not like Dvorbius. Also, yes, can we have an F in chat? And some of your saddest emotes out there. Sebastian. Oh, I could pause. I was gonna type in it's chat too, but I like, can't. Don't let him do this to you. You're right. That goddamn son of a bitch. This is what he wants. So yeah, the plan is, we're gonna attack the stronghold where Father Theodore is, and it's confirmed that our daughter is there. And there's some strange signals that our wife may be there too, so... Okay. 
that's the problem. What do you mean? I picked the Theodore's, but it's her. I think that I found. Great. It's not. Okay, I'll go check. Okay. There's an assault rifle there, but we're not going to be picking that up because it's time loss. So. Gotta go fast. Doesn't really make a difference anyway, so. So we're gonna actually be picking up the long-awaited sniper rifle. It's about time too. But this part of the game in the open world, uh, you'll recognize I'm taking the same route I was taking to get to the paintings. But the whole world's on fire. You have the Guardian. You have Obscura. You also have O'Neill in the open world now too. So if we're lucky, we'd only run into one or two of them. This is where it gets a bit tricky. Shit. That really is a stronghold. What's going on in there? We're gonna do some quick crafting. Crap five, sure. That's O'Neill's audio cue. You can hear the flamethrower in the back. You climb this ladder. There's the sniper rifle's up here. We won't be using it yet, though. We're going to be placing an electric bolt here so this explosion doesn't kill us, although it probably wouldn't, regardless of if it hit us or not. Okay, good. And we're going to be... I think I can get away. YOLO. Ultimate right here. Actually, that was intentional, so I could heal and get uh, full stamina. Running same path. Uh, we're just kind of getting to this house where we're going to meet up with Hoffman, who says, are you ready? And we just say, yeah. Now, if you recall, in the very, 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 very beginning of the game, when I chose casual difficulty, I selected auto-aim. There's no auto-aim with the keyboard and mouse. So, we're going to be switching to the controller here. There are two parts of the run where you need to use a controller here, world recording. Why didn't you ban the controller? Well, we don't have a big enough community to say, hey, you know what, maybe we should just ban the controller usage. Why is controller in particular good here? You won't get to see it here, but you'll get to see it in the final split. But it's a very cool showcase. But um, So this section, it, it's another kind of cabin section. It is kill-based. Enemies are going to spawn in the fire, but they're incredibly hard to see. Like, because it's molten spawning of the fire. But ah, yeah. your gun can kind of track where they're spawning, and it's three pistol hits. So, this is where we use. And because it is a, a miniature cabin base, you do want to kill them quickly. So, And it is a bit random where they spawn. So. It's not as apparent here. I'll show you in the final. It's so funny how it's used in the final split, so... So if I just aim, you see how my controller just snapped in place? So... My argument is they're impossible to see, so. How much further? 
I mean, all's fair, I'd say. Yeah. He wants to keep us out. Good. That means he's afraid. I just need that little AI flick. That's you know, if you saw it on a kill cam in Apex, you you know you'd report them, but. I wait until they roar because that's when they actually spawn. They actually have iframes prior. Is that one right there? That is one right there. Oh. Back up. Let's go. That was close. I told you it was temperamental. So yeah, as you can see, like imagine if you were just hunting for them, listening for audio cues, you'd lose like maybe five seconds per enemy that was spawning if you just played with the controller. But because uh, you got that little uh, aid, actually makes it a little bit easier. This takes aim assist actually to the next level. It is actually an aim bot. It's actually kind of funny. Do them. So would you be using the controller uh, be useful in other parts of the run? I, for world record attempts on cabin, I use it on cabin. But I figured, you know, real time it's not worth the, uh, it's not the worst. Uh, mostly just cabin, pretty much, so. Cabin and the end section. You could actually lose a run in the very last 30 seconds of this game if you don't have uh, a controller. And I can kind of just show it to you. It's actually very funny how it works, so... That's that section. We skip the scene where uh, Hoffman actually sacrifices herself to save you. So it's just you now. Another F in chat for Hoffman, please. I'll make him pay. I promise. So we are now approaching my favorite part of the game, the After Tower this, of Fire Climb, uh, into the boss that, rush. But so. he's not going to stop me. I can't do it now, unfortunately, but at my uh, peak, and I actually submitted this as an incentive for SGDQ, but I would do the whole boss rush blindfolded, which is not as hard as you would think if you ran the game a lot because of the uh, audio cues of where enemies are. So it was actually a cool incentive. Shoutouts to backwards long jumping in Super Mario 64. You will never get there. Just we just stand here to recharge our stamina because it is a set amount of time. Or rumors. I call this split the backwards long jump just because it's a lot of those uh, endless staircases that he just kind of tosses at you. The argument I heard that I feel like if I did any percent, it might have had a better chance getting in because it is a much shorter run. But I do think a three-hour RTA run is quite a bit long. So there's always future events. There is always future events. Also, the content patch for this game is very uh, gory. So. Hopefully, oh, he didn't hit us. We're gonna need to kill this Molten up here because there's a whole cutscene that plays after we hit the switch and he can actually kill you out of the cutscene. He's not dead. 
He's still not dead. He's dead. So if you didn't shoot him or kill him in this cutscene, he is hitting you. You see your HP bar go slowly down. As you know, whoa. Oh. Uh, as aptly demonstrated. I swore I killed him, but you know, sometimes that's the game. But yeah, that is an example of what happens in cutscenes. The cutscene will get interrupted and just show you getting hit, get grabbed, and all that stuff. So time loss, death, and all that stuff. Actually, I'm kind of glad that happened, so you could actually see what I was talking about, how uh, you don't get any iframes in this game. It has to prove the point. Uh, yeah. You can, yeah, even on ladders and on... Yeah, even on ladders you can get knocked off. At, or you don't get knocked off, you just die. Which is kind of funny. Because I don't think the game registers you uh, getting knocked off of things. But uh, you'll still take damage. We're approaching the couple of final splits of this game. My very favorite split coming up. Um, if you are in the US, I know it is a bit late, but I promise you, the next 10-15 minutes are just super fun, especially if you played the Evil Within one, so. Bit of praise here. Hopefully the Molten that's to the right of me. Sebastian. Oh! Sebastian's telekinetic? That was actually really funny. He was pressing the lever, but his character model wasn't, so... Anyway, that just shows you how great this engine is. I think I've seen that happen once, but... It feels very nice to play, but it's very janky with how it actually moves. This room is timed, um, we're just going to be killing this first dog because he actually does kind of get a bit annoying. The other two dogs we're going to kind of uh, leave alone. We get really lucky they don't see us, but we can kind of tell with the sneak impression. For some reason they know where I am, I'm going to taunt him a little. Usually if you run a lab, you have a bit of a chance, and then this gate opens. So. Another endless staircase, and we're going to be going into the boss rush for this game. My personally, my, my favorite split, you're going to be fighting all the evil within one bosses uh, in a row, back to back to back to back. That being said, we're going to be creating all the sniper rifle bullets we can. Because uh, in this part of the story, Father Theodore is just like, um, uh, you know, these are your past skills. You know, I can use your past skills to trip you up. And Sebastian's like, bro, not this time. I got my daughter to rescue you. So. He realized it wasn't his fault. Yeah. There's actually a very cool uh, tribute. So the first boss we're going to fight is a chainsaw dude. And he's the very first boss you run away from in the Evil Within 1. And there's a scene where Sebastian in the first game runs into an elevator. But in this game, he runs into him well, I'll let you guys I'll let you guys enjoy this. I'll keep the talking to a minimum. I'm gonna turn up the music. Ooh. I will turn up the music. The music is pretty good for this. All the evil within bosses. Let's go.
Any cat jams in chat? In the original game, he runs away actually in the elevator, but you know, this game he's just like, nah. First boss, I promise you the rest are not quick time events, only the first bosses. So. The second boss we're going to be fighting is the Pyramid Head Tribute, uh, the Guardian. He is kind of the token character of evil within one that appeared in a lot of the promotional art. He's uh, a tribute the Keeper? To... Is it a... Oh yeah, it is Keeper, not Guardian. Guardian was... Okay, yeah. Keeper, sorry. Yeah, I know, because he's in a Saw the Game. Oh. Uh, the Cube Head. There's a cool glitch here. If I if I hesitate taking out the sniper, shooting the sniper rifle for like half a second and shoot it at him, his first attack will actually go through me because it hits me on that split second of uh, iframe. So I will try to get that. Oh, I just missed. So he goes down, but if you're familiar with the evil within one, he just respawns somewhere, so we're kind of just using audio cues. There's more than one, so... That's the keeper. Now my favorite. Soundtrack in the game and my favorite evil within one boss, Laura. So. She kills you in one hit. We have to burn her. So we're gonna be putting putting set uh cross bolts and activating furnaces in very set fashion. If she ever reaches us, we die, so. Although the death animation from dying is actually sweet. She just crushes your head in. The soundtrack is banger too. By taking that line. Oh, okay, bad RNG. She normally comes around the corner we're looking at, but look her being here. It works out either way. She's caught in the flames. And that's Laura. Worked out either way, so. But it wasn't Laura. It was actually fought a Theodore. And we beat him. It's the end of the game. I have to wonder why didn't he keep the chainsaw? Something, something. It's all a figment of your imagination. I was gonna kind of mess with uh, the tech dude and just say, and that's time. And then I would have said it for each boss and say, but we still have one bit of the game to go. So if, if you recall that monster made of white goo in the beginning of the game, that's who our final boss is. So we killed Stefano, we killed Father Theodore. But who could the final boss be? Well, it's your wife. Who knew that your ex-wife would be the most dangerous for them all? But yeah, no, uh, Myra, your ex-wife, has gotten corrupted by the STEM system, and she is that white monster. So she is actually holding your daughter hostage in this final standoff that's going to come happen. What is this? Myra! Shit. What is she trying to do? 
we're gonna be introduced to a new enemy type they only show up in this section of the game they're brittle they're kind of like regenerators as well but their hitboxes are really weird i mean they just look like zombies but sometimes they don't break sometimes they do best case scenario you hope they die in one shot worst case scenario they're just bullet sponges some of them can eat up to like five six shotgun shells each so i'm gonna some try to aim a little bit lower so i can break their legs and just stomp on them but it's a bit hopefully some good rng comes i gotta get rid of these things maybe then i can alive good At each of these areas, you do have to kill these uh, dudes. Not dead. Okay. Bit unlucky there. We didn't get any one shots off. But... Yeah, we're gonna be slowly clearing out these areas so we can head to our uh, defamation. I mean, our final battle uh, with uh, our ex-wife. So. Hopefully getting there, I don't shit the bed, so... I'll have to see. Yeah, the, that's... This is why I don't... This is like a part of Great Engine. Why I don't like a bit of this run, because you could just lose so much time, and this is like one of the very last splits of the game, too. Seems like a real run killer. It is actually, like, sometimes I didn't get any one-shots, and you know, not one-shotting them, especially when you're like, let's just say, 20 seconds ahead. And then suddenly you lose 30 seconds here, you know, it's just kind of sucks, so. Another mini boss, I wonder where its weak spot is. Oh god. It's hard to say. Hard to say. Maybe it's the arms. I think it's the telephone pole it's holding, to be fair. Oh yeah. This is the most boring run you will make. You see that house up there? Yep. I have to run all the way up there. <laughs> yep. It's far. It's only time loss, nothing else. Normally, if you play this game casually, uh, they have a lot of dialogue options here that kind of just, you know, tie up the game of what's been going on behind the scenes with Myra. But, uh, it's very bright. I'm gonna be skipping most of them as we just kind of tap, 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 tap a root.
We're gonna be fighting the final boss, your ex-wife. In the game. Uh, formally, it's called the Matriarch. It has five phases. Um, I, typical iframes, very obvious weak spot. We're gonna be trying to one-shot or two-shot a lot of the phases. Um, using explosive bolts and sniper rifle bullets. And this is the last real part of the game, so we're gonna use the sniper rifles bullets we have and then uh, craft some more once we run out, so. Final boss time, actual final boss, so. The Matriarch, aka your ex-wife, so. We're gonna wait for our iframes to run out. Right after doing. Think about what you're doing. She has a little bit of a stun phase. We're gonna craft as many bullets as we can, as many explosives as we can. A little bit to the right because it gives us a clear view. That's phase one. Frames run out. You can't stop me. Please, Myra. I know you're still in there. You gotta stop. Phase two. If you get really lucky with RNG, sometimes that first explosive bolt can actually uh, detach the arm. But I think that is a hitbox thing. It's hard to replicate. Phase three coming up. We're running into a very specific spot, so she doesn't hit us with her one-shot kill attack and um, we get access to her weak spot a bit, a little bit easier. That giant hand didn't block me, you know, but... So that's actually phase three. She's gonna go into recovery mode uh, while her giant claw tail thing just tries to stomp us. But this spot is relatively safe, and as soon as I've said that, I know I'm going to get hit. Because, you know, that's how things on GDQ usually work, so. That's stage four. We got one more stage left, and by one more stage, I mean one good shot to her mouth. That's the final boss. But you can still lose the run, because you have one more split, and that is running out of the simulation. So at this point, you're going to go rescue your daughter. So there are two sides of this what need to happen. You're going to be playing two characters now. You've got to play as Sebastian, who's going to run out of the simulation, and you're going to go play as Kidman, who is trying to get Sebastian out of the, uh, the simulation. And this is the part where I kind of wanted to show something really cool with the uh, controller. So imagine you're on world record pace, you know, like 
you're 30 seconds ahead you're just your chat's like pog world record and then you come to this section where you just kind of got to like shoot enemies in the head you got to clear the whole room you know like this you get hit this this whole thing goes on you know when in reality what you could do is this the right usb this is the right usb when in reality what you could do hold up it's connected what you could do is just look away from the screen. Hold up. Make sure it's loaded in. Okay. Am I out of bullets? I am out of bullets. But yeah, you get the, you get what I mean. Switch the auto aim is uh, pretty busted. <laughs> yeah. Also, even better, can't you just like keep going up and down to never actually take a hit? Yeah, so no, I mean, if I showed it off right, it'd be like up, down, up, down. You would have just cleared all four, but I wasn't looking at the screen. I don't know which shot it is. So. <laughs> Upstairs. Movement kind of sucks with the controller, but yeah. It is, we got one more section of that. Oh, look at this aiming through the wall. You see this tracking? Some say he cheats. Only you did that. I'm not two moving. Hours I, ago. I, I, I am not moving the aiming button. I am just aim. I or I'm not moving the directional button. I am just holding the aim button down, and it just oh, snaps to their head. So that's the uh, aim assist in this game. So if you want world record, you do need to do that. So both world record and my second place run has that. So. Kidman, I've got her. Where do I go? Get to your room. Uh, the end of the run is coming shortly. Maybe in about 40, 45 seconds. You know why? So. Okay. I'd like to give a big shout out to. Well, I might as well just do my shout outs now, because I'm just holding W and zigzagging. Big shout out to Ictisis. You know, obviously, solo commentating a run sucks, but he's been there to ask the good questions. I have a lot of fun. Thank you to all the viewers. You guys have been great. Uh, thanks to all the horse speedrunners uh, that have kept me going through all these speed games. Thanks to Stevie Blue, who is actually the world record holder for this and one of my main resources who helped me a lot through this run. Thank you to all the GDQ staff. And uh, before I, and like I said before, thank you to all the father figures. Uh, this upcoming Father's Day in maybe a week or so, all that you've done. Uh, my name is Abu Kamu. I don't speedrun as much anymore. It's on my channel, so you can give it a follow. But uh, I will be at G SGDQ Live. So if you do see me there and you do head there, you could just say, hey, it's Abu Kamu. And I'll be like, oh, hey, and I'll buy you a drink or something. So. Well, now you're gonna, yeah. everyone's going to go up to you and buy, uh, ask for a drink now. All right, time's uh, coming up. Three, two, one. Yeah. That is time. Some cool scenes. Yeah, we'll watch out the ending here. Yeah. That was a really underestimate, by the way. That's good. So, uh, pretty much what happens is, uh, I knew you would. You need to get out of the simulation while Kidman stalls for time, because the whole system, everyone connected to the system, is going to get like, <laughs> because your wife controls the system. And even though you just beat your wife in a custody battle, she says, you know what? You know what? I'll let you live. Pretty much so. Just remember, if you talk to Avo at GDQ, he'll buy you a drink. I will buy you a drink. <sighs> Everyone's dead. Your wife killed them all. Oh. That's e that's the evil within too. You want to play the sequel by Tokyo Ghostwire? No, <laughs> but uh, yeah, Tokyo Ghostwire is the newest game. Unfortunately, there are no plans for Evil Within Three, but the ending right here kind of shows that the system is still online. So it kind of does leave a lot of uh, open doors for that. But anyway, that's my run. Thank you, Ak. Thank you, GDQ. Thank you, guys. Uh, I will catch you all later.
definitely thank you for doing the run. And once again, if anyone did miss it, uh, you can find Avu at uh, twitch.tv slash Avukamu if you did enjoy the run. And thank you again for showing this off. Uh, it was fun to have uh, this showcase of games today. And uh, that about is uh, the wrapping up of the show. I do want to say thank you all for watching, everyone. I hope you all enjoyed this episode of Speedruns from the Crypt. Uh, we're here every two weeks on GDQ, and we'll be back in uh, two more weeks. And I think that's actually going to be the last show right before our GDQ. Uh, so we are uh, building up to the big, big marathon days, so that should be a lot of fun. Uh, we'll be back normally then, but until then, have a good time, and see you next time. Hope you'll all be doing well. Uh, in addition, before we do go, I just want to say that we will be going for a raid, so please join us on that. Anyway, have a great night. I've been Nick Dysis. I host all the shows, and uh, you can find me in this general region down here on pretty much everything. So, have a good night, everyone.